Hello, good evening, and welcome to the stream, and if you're watching the video on YouTube, hi all, and welcome to the video. Yes, indeed, we are, <laughs> we are back again since, when was the last stream, Sunday, I think? Yeah, something like that, oh, stream elements has caught up with this, well done. Right, okay, so, I give away, reset. There you go, 16 redone. Okay, good stuff. And then... Giveaway open. There we go. Mathematica, welcome to the stream let's go to the live screen there we go good stuff right okay it is the time so Zingavo, welcome on in to the stream let's go and get ourselves some daily missions yes it's gloom o'clock on rubicar it's the middle of the night on rubicar clearly Applying for a job. Straightforward, please. Goodbye. There we go. Right. We're doing one at a time. We'd like an elite assignment. Prisoner. There we go. Goodbye. And finally, alien handler. Aliens alone, plicks. There we go. Find ammunition again. All right. All right. Are freelancers back up, or is they are they back up tomorrow? Can't remember. Not seeing them tonight, so I'm guessing tomorrow. Right, okay, let's get some buffs. There we are. Nearly done. Wait a moment. <laughs> that lasts for so many that you know you've got to wait for the mobs involved to recharge basically right odin's other eye and four hours there right let's get some pets on the go get that right okay so we want uh, this guy and then Mathematica with a loot please good luck Vacation of empowerment. There we go. I think that's the, the full suite of buffs. Right, okay, good stuff. Ah, oh, dearie, dearie me. So how's everyone doing? How has your week been, basically? Has you been good? We're going to do prisoner first, eh? to West Athen, everyone. Yeah, this week has absolutely flown by. It feels like a day ago that I was streaming and saying, I'll try and get one in midweek done. Meaning, I get another stream done and then just... Nah. <laughs> Here we are again. Galter Torben, welcome to the stream 
Good to see you. Welcome aboard. At your service. And diseased prisoner, yeah. Uh, let's get some shields. Uh, there we go. Creation shield of Z. When did I stream? I stream Saturday, stream Sunday. Did I stream Monday as well? I don't remember now. We have transcoding, by the way. We do. <laughs> Been working like mad at the new position. Loot, please. Good luck, sir. Galto Ben, thank you for the sub with Prime yesterday. So you followed yesterday and you subbed yesterday. Thank you very much. Just looking at the log here, so thank you very big for that. And then someone, Conic Atu, followed you two days ago. And four out of five dentists followed three days ago. And Peen? <laughs> or Fien? Followed you three days ago. Okay. Um... Yeah, th thank you, when you hear this. Unless you're already hiding in the chat, which is fine if you are. Right. To the diseased prisoner. Right. We'll go Harry's. We'll go that way, because I like that way. Just do. Right. Right hand, left hand. There we go, let's pop this on. Normally looking on YouTube, but remembered that I already I already also have Twitch. <laughs> Well, you know, Twitch is free. Um, and if you have Prime, well, you get you get a free sub with uh, Twitch, don't you still? <coughs> Old guy, you know? Yeah, you and me both, mate. Um, yeah, if the, if the grey don't give it away, you know, everything else should. The Hulk has to clap to fly. I call BS on this. Strade and welcome to the stream. Oh, yeah, very smart Hulk. See? Ah, ah. Smart Hulk doesn't have to. Hulk never flew, though, did he? He always just jumped a lot. Really, 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 really high and fast. Kind of like if you, if you scaled a flea up to a human being, it would jump a mile high, a thousand mile an hour, or, or you know something like that. I can't remember um, hearing about that. I think in school maybe <clears throat> to explain just how phenomenal a flea jumping is. He figured out he could clap hard enough to propel himself. Smart Hulk. Hulk math. Yeah, not smash, math. And this, this Hulk is so smart, he flies with quantum wings that you can't even see. Because they're quantum. Unknowable.
it was fighting Superman in space or something. It was weird. Yeah, there's been a few comics where you, you know, it, I mean, the whole premise is is kind of not very um, science friendly, let's say. But yeah, I, there's some of the. I mean, the whole premise is kind of like, wait, what? Um, but it it, it kind of works within its own internal logic, and then sometimes even the comics go a bit, wait, what? <coughs> Excuse me. Gamma rays don't do that to people. No, they, they they sort of kill people uh, in sufficient doses. It was it, when did when did it start in the forties? The, the Hulk. Superman was nineteen thirty nine, wasn't he? And uh, Batman was nine. It was it was a few weeks or months after that. Hulk was Marvel, so I don't know when Hulk first came. A long time ago. Let's have a look. And he was grey to begin with, wasn't he, the Hulk? <coughs> Incredible Hulk 1. Um, oh, wow, it's 1962. So that's um, a long time after most of the others then. <laughs> Yeah, the first Hulk. There you go. He he was um, he was grey. I remember that. And then later on, uh, for whatever reason, he became green. I don't know what the you know the the kind of reasons were, but yeah, Superman's nineteen thirteen May thirty nine, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think it is May 1939. That's the one. Yeah, they, oh June 1938. What it's printed on on the screen there, isn't it? Something like that, yeah. June nineteen thirty eight. Yeah, June nineteen thirty eight. Um then Batman First issue April fourth, nineteen forty. I don't remember it being that. Wasn't he in Detective Comics first? Yeah, that's the comic cover I remember. Ten cents. May 1939. Detective Comics, uh, the unique adventures of the Batman. Yeah, there you go. When comics cost that little. You know, when you could when you could buy a house for like twelve hundred dollars or something, you know and you probably earned nine hundred a year or something, I don't know. There was some post about that. Some old geezer saying, Oh, I bought my first house in nineteen sixty nine for three and a half thousand. I was earning eleven thousand as a as a full-time firefighter um, and we'd paid it off four or five years later or something like that you know whereas nowadays um, to scale up the same house is worth 650,000 and you'd need 200,000 a year just to be able to pay it off as quickly or something crazy My 
my city normal family house costs eight to nine hundred thousand for the for the low end yeah there you go so who ends up owning all the houses massive corporations so you never actually own them and then you get sold on a on a leasehold which means you never truly own it so oh yeah it's just bullshit there Yeah, the, the inflation on um, on houses is just absolutely ridiculous now. They in no way, shape, or form are worth the money that they charge for a house. Mm. If you buy a house and you want to leave it to your family. Oh no, inheritance tax. Yeah, they just want want they just want to own you basically. <laughs> Trucks inflation. Yeah, vehicles as well that are just massively uh, it, it's wage stagnation is what it is, you know. Um and it, it's decades and decades of it. And the thems that make the rules are the ones, or you know, that that own it all anyway. So they ain't going to change it. They're quite happy. Thank you very much. So it is. Ninety to a hundred and twenty, just for a Dodge Ram. I know. Yep. Where's all that money going? Corpo trash. Yeah, it's going to the shareholders. Greed, 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 greed. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's how it is. <laughs> that's why I'm very fond of, like, uh, TNG, Star Trek Next Generation episodes, like, um... Time's Arrow. Sam Clemens, i.e., you know, Mark Twain, um, <clears throat> on the Enterprise, assuming that, you know, it's a military ship and only the pr privileged few are on it and the poor are all still starving and whatnot. And Deanna Troy's going, no, there is no poverty. It doesn't exist anymore, you know. The, the people here are here because they, they want to be, you know. And even if they weren't, they wouldn't be in poverty doesn't exist you know not, uh, he's and you're saying he ain't that's it ain't so anymore <laughs> it's a brilliant performance mark Twain. it's my favorite kind of double double episode of um of tng i think probably even more than um uh, you know when they used to end on a cliffhanger episode at the end of the season and then have the conclusion to the cliffhanger at the beginning of the next. I think they, they did that a couple of times. Once was um, Picard being captured by the Borg and turned into a, a Borg, a Locutus of Borg. And then Time's Arrow was another one where they find a Data's head inside a cave in San Francisco. And it's 500 years old. Uh, it's just a uh, th th that two part is just one of my favourites. <laughs> Lost my job to to electric cars being made and no use for our engine plant. Yeah, and yet they can't sell the uh, electric trucks. People just ain't buying them. They're making them, <laughs> but then, they, then they've got dealerships with car parks full of them. And no one wants them. I was, I was reading about that. It's not catching on. I 
You know, they're making all these pickups, and people that live out in rural areas are going, hell no. <laughs> you know, I don't want that. I want something I can fill up at the local gas station. Thanks. Something that works in the winter. Uh, you know, and so on and so forth. It'll catch on once the battery technology super be actually becomes good enough. It's the battery technology's got to be developed more. You feel the core of your being shift as the source makes room for a divine presence. Dirty. Yeah, Dirty has reached enlightenment. Congratulations. I'm making 31 an hour. Heat treating chainsaw bars. They worked as hard, demanded more. And then all of a sudden, they had to cut 300 jobs. Sorry, yeah. Not profitable anymore. And apparently some factory in East Asia can do the same job for a bowl of rice a day. Yeah. farmed it out to a sweatshop somewhere yeah a lot of that goes on as well come to cyber exile with a loot please good luck and fury destroyer with loot please good luck we've got a xeno has turned up as well okay she'll recruit you Mains <laughs> loot, please. Good luck. After doing this delivery food full time, damn, does it suck. They don't pay enough without customers adding tips. Yeah, they, they, they treat a lot of this delivery business like it's, it's, they're running it like a diner or restaurant where people are essentially they are working for the tips. Whereas with delivery stuff, a lot of people don't think of it the same way. You know, when Amazon drops something off, you don't tip the guy, you usually do. You, you, you've already paid for premium delivery and everything. So, yeah, but they, they try and do it that way, though. Like, in, in the UK, the, you, you do have tips in, in you know, restaurants, um, diners and whatnot, but... Um, People are paid um, for their time while they're there, you know, not... They're not expected to live off the tips. You know, so tipping in the UK is kind of like... A lot of people don't, you know? They just pay for the food and, like, they'll maybe go keep the change and the change is hence, rather than, you know... A percentage. Uh, oh no. We've got find ammunition, let's go do that one. need to I'm gonna put on the other shield of win uh, I jumped I stopped it going on right oh no I don't want to do that yet do I do I yeah go on I, yeah I do I'm just gonna lose grid space and all that but never mind It's like Prime Video thinking, oh, well, we're going to run ads on our streaming service. It's like you have no, you have not understood what the point of a streaming service is um, and why it became popular. And now you're greedy. You want to make more money with it. <laughs> it's not working. The, the, the sign-up rate for <coughs> people that have gone, yeah, I'll pay the extra to stay ad-free falling flat on its ass. 
no nobody's picked it up you know like a tiny percentage of people have gone yeah okay then and a lot of people have just cancelled their prime it's utterly backfired They're like, oh, screw you, I'll just download it. Arr. You know, it's like they've forgotten people can do that. And have no qualms about doing that, you know? Zizan, welcome to the stream. Good to see you, sir. Yep. It's like Prime was pretty crap anyway. I mean, anything new was like, watch, you know, rent it for three three dollars it's like you're not blockbusters what are you talking about you remember blockbusters that you know used to rent movies from them yeah the, what happened to them oh yeah streaming services that's what happened to them and now they've got rid of the streaming services through the, the competition of um being a you know watch it whenever uh, streaming service they've kind of forgotten what happened to the guys who were renting stuff out and are trying to charge people and rent programs out that you're already paying for I'm wondering why it's not working it's like who are these ass hats you know I mean <laughs> seriously what's wrong with them how dumb do you have to be I think they've got into their heads a very different idea of what they are versus what they are in reality you know trandor welcome to the stream yeah i think in their minds they think they're paramount or warner brothers or something like that it's like oh hell no nah. no nah, you ain't all that you know like oh prime exclusive you know and they have made some good stuff like the good omens was really good and you know a few other shows like that and Netflix are trying to do the same with their, you know, oh, we've made a new show kind of thing. And people are like, yeah, nah, <laughs> it's not very good. <laughs> it's like the Witcher TV show that imploded, like in season two. Season one was fine. And then season two was like, what the f is this? into the pandaverse and then blame the audience for not watching it it's the audience's fault yeah you're right and the audience not liking what you make means they're wrong couldn't possibly be you've done a switcheroo and this isn't what people want it's just beggars boggles my mind how these people's brains operate it's sheer arrogance Yeah, you can't have eternal growth in any corporation. You can't. The, the, the planet is finite. The number of people on it are finite. And the res resources on it are finite. You can't have never-ending growth. It doesn't work. You can have growth for quite a long time. We've seen that over the last 75 years or more. Um, and it's just it's reached the end of the rope, you know? And it's like they just can't figure it out. It's like a scene from Don't Look Up, you know? The thing is happening. Yeah, but what, how likely is it to happen? No, it's happening. Well, how likely? 99.7%. Ah, so it's not 100% then. What? <laughs> you know, it's like... What? What's wrong with you? <coughs> so you're saying there's a chance? Yeah, that's it. That that's how they operate. They just li live in blind hope, you know, in in defiance of the, you know, the obvious how it all I mean all that's happened is uh, in order to sustain growth they've just absorbed other companies so now everything's a mega corporation you know 
What is it? Like seven companies control all food production or 99% of all food production? That ain't right. Holy hell. No. But that's how it is. That's what's that's what's ended up happening. Wasn't it in the first Deus Ex game? One of the characters in that talks about it. Like in in 1938, 98 percent of all businesses or people in in america were self-employed meaning you know they own their own mom and pop business now it's like three percent are self-employed it's consolidation all right it's going hand some of this in side note young Guinan is present in 1893 yeah we're in san francisco where data travels which means she's at least 500 years old yeah exactly she is like Guinan says to Picard before they go down to the Alpha Seti 3 or whatever the name of the planet is um do you remember the first time we met and he says yeah and she she just says don't be so sure he's like wait what what does that mean you know um and then of course he meets her 500 years earlier but she can't tell him about it until right before she does meet him for the first time and he travels back in time 500 years to talk to her because it's 24th century there in isn't it uh, oldest yeah I work in pyramid scheme and people th think it's amazing yeah it is it's pyramid scheme All the massive con. I've come across um, pyramid uh, schemes as well. People going, oh yeah, this this new product's better than Avon and blah blah blah. Door to door sales. <clears throat> We'd like to set you up as a team manager for this, and you're like, yeah, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Let me look at this business plan. This is a pyramid. No, it's a trapezoid, uh, which is totally different. It's a pyramid scheme, isn't it? Yeah, but you have to pay it front. And all it, all it ends up is you end up with a garage full of crap and no money. <laughs> That's how it works. Yeah, you, you sell it, they sell it downwards to, you know, like the, 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 the kind of mid-tier guys just end up with a garage full of crap they can't can't get rid of and no money. Yeah, sold it to you. It's your problem now. You just got to be motivated for sales. It's like people don't want to buy it. They're not going to buy it, you know. Right, return to the agency. I will. Get a hand in the alien daily. Oh no, you don't need to, do you? It's uh Yeah, when you when you speak to the commander, it does it. Right, okay, let's put on a weapon of choice.
There we go. Right, we're going to go to the garden, and I am going to go grab a beer, I think. I think that's an entirely appropriate thing to do. Yes, it is. thought I would start with a cup of tea, but I'm thinking time for a beer. Beer o'clock. Nearly eight o'clock. So, I won't be long grabbing a beer anyway, so I will very quickly pop you on the intermission screen and state my hair. Needs a wash and a haircut for definite. Ramadan. Well, it might. Yeah, it is Ramadan, but I'm I'm not a Muslim, so. <laughs> uh, you know, and if you're Christian, it's Lent. But I mean, I was raised a Christian. I don't know. I can't remember the last time I went to church. Being honest. But yeah, no, I, I Catholic schools. You know, prayers in the yeah assembly in the morning. You sang hymns. Uh, you said the Lord's Prayer before dinner. Etc, etc. It was all... Yeah, yeah. All of that fun stuff. Well, that, that, that's where I grew up. That's how it was when I grew up. I've got friends who are pagan still. So they, they still worship the old gods, you know. And so for them, it's the solstice, it's the um, spring equinox, the autumn equinox, all of that stuff. to do the, the Harvest Festival, which is really the um, the autumn equinox. You're bringing all your crops and food in. Loads of it's old stuff that's evolved and... Oh my God! Look everyone, Doja in two kills. We didn't even make it to sunshine. There you go. We've gone to sunshine just to enjoy the moment of getting a doja that quickly. I thought we we're going to be, ah, oh, we'll, be, we'll be 30 to 45 minutes doing this. <laughs> Got one in two kills. Oh, my God. Yeah, pyramid sales, uh, not good. Aren't they kind of illegal now? You're not allowed to, to what do they call it, a Ponzi scheme or something like that? Isn't that, isn't that one of the names for them? You get caught setting up a Ponzi scheme and, yeah. Right, 
might return to the agency. Anyway, I've given up broccoli uh, for Lent. <laughs> that, that was the thing uh, as I was growing up. You know, Lent would come along and, oh, what are you giving up for Lent? You know, it used to be, oh, you no know, meat for Lent or something like that, or f only fish for Lent. Uh, and then we was like, wait, you can choose. Yeah, uh, I'm giving up um, um, sprouts and broccoli for Lent. Um, well, tell me, son, do you, are they one of your... Oh, yeah, well, favourites, uh, so that's why I'm giving them up, honest. You know... The, the, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally, um, oh, so, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a great undertaking to give up those things. Honest. You know, the, the, an awful lot of that goes on. Um... Uh, that, that's it, we'll... 2,000 year old, you know, religion, it's like at this point people sort of treat it almost like fashion, a lot of people. A lot of people take it seriously and, you know, and I respect them and, and that's fine. But <clears throat> a great many, yeah, they kind of treat it like fashion. Easy come, easy go. Confess it all, it'll be all right. <laughs> Commit the sin, then ask for forgiveness, you know. <clears throat> 20 Hail Marys and a something, something, something. There you go, go in peace. Yeah. Slightly dodgy. Lady Sky Cannon, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Right, should we go and have a muck about on 2019? I think so. We, didn't we start another character? Started an enforcer, didn't we? Something like that? I think we did. Because we, we tried doing the Smugglers Daily and just went, oh, I hate this. Uh, and stopped doing that daily. I am no man. That was it. Yeah. Straight from um, <laughs> Lord of the Rings. The Return of the King movie. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, what's, oh no, I've already claimed it on the other... Right, okay, where were we up to with this character? Uh, we've done a few basic implants. Not done the waist, oh, we should do that. Got no nano NCU, I mean, on this character, so. For some reason, no waste implant. Let's go get one. What waste have we got here? Brawling, yada yada yada. Okay. What? What? Which one does the keeper get? I'm trying to remember. If there's two hand edge in waste, I can't remember now. Biomet max health. Actually, that sounds better. What quality we put in? Tens. Could I do a twenty? Stamina forty four. Oh yeah, we can do, we can do a twenty in that slot. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, there were a lot of these. Um, 
pyramid stroke Ponzi schemes, weren't they? They, they were a big thing. Talking of keepers, I've made a Trox keeper. Nice. Who is that? It needs to scroll up. Scroll. Stoneface73 has followed. Thank you very much for the follow. Yeah, it's actually on, on the pyramid scheme things, aren't they illegal now? <coughs> I think they are... Let's have a look. Are they well? Are they illegal? Let's ask the general question. Pyramid selling schemes are illegal, and people who establish, operate, or promote them can be prosecuted under the Consumer Rights Protection for Unfair Trading Regulations, two thousand and eight. Uh, is that also in the UK? Yeah, it's it's illegal in the UK. Like the US of A. Uh, pyramid schemes are illegal under under state and federal law. Ooh, it's a felony. That that be bad. You you don't want a felony. Uh oh. Yeah, three of them, and you're never coming out. Yeah, I think it depends country to country. Yeah. Uh, no stellar bonds for you. Well, Tupperware kind of was, wasn't it? But Tupperware and Avon, um, aren't they not really classed as that? Is it a pyramid scheme? Unlike pyramid schemes, M and MLM companies like T Tupperware offer legitimate products that are sold to consumers rather than relying slowly on recruitment of new members to generate income. Yeah, I was going to say people actually bought Tupperware because it was good. Uh, Tupperware and there was another one, wasn't there? Avon, yeah. <coughs> Avon is one of the many multi-level companies that generate billions a year after year, while some consider multi-level marketing variation traditional pyramid scheme others claim the model is new yeah they kind of like on the edge but you can actually make money with them yeah like tupperware the, the product is actually a, a, a good product and it is useful and people do buy it so yeah I mean, God, it was it was so popular in in the seventies in the movie Airplane with um, Leslie Nielsen. Um, said, "Oh, here we are taking." You know, we worked in the oh, what was it? When they go out and take Christian religion out to the to the um, <laughs> to the primitive peoples of some foreign land. I mean, is it missionary work or something like that? Yeah. Um, and they cut to her doing the missionary work and she's just doing a Tupperware party. And this one, you can pour all of your cereals and grains and seal it away. It'll give it an extra four months, a, a year, you know, an extra four months shelf life. And that really stretches your food dollar. And, and blah, you know, and it, it is actually a useful product, you know. Yeah, most of these pyramid schemes, the product itself is a ton of garbage that nobody will ever buy off you. You know, like end user product, as in uh, the you know the, the consumer themselves at the very end of the chain actually wants it. So people do buy it, and you do make your money. Yeah, they're selling a legitimate product that people want. Like an Avon was like, yeah, you know. Um, top shelf makeup um products that people actually wanted you know that worked and, and were you know weren't just a name brand but worked okay you know there was definitely because <clears throat> we get um like avon people calling at the house now you know so they're still out there Okay, so we got that. We got 
Yep. We've got the Elite Daily at the Temple. Yeah, so effectively it operates like a pyramid scheme, but it's a pyramid scheme where you're not getting ripped off by the people above you. You can't actually make money at it. Aliens alone. Place the bomber. Okay. Uh, the freelancers isn't up, so let's place the bomb. Let's go do that one. Yeah, the product it's, itself, a lot of them are just like um, copycat inferior products that nobody actually wants to buy. Like, I can remember when I was looking for alternative work. Um, I, I went, I did the Kirby thing. Now, Kirby are an American company that make a very powerful um, vacuum cleaner. And the the turbine electric motor that they use, etc. Really, really powerful. Tons and tons of suction. Effectively powers through stuff purely, <laughs> you know, with the power of that turbine motor. Um, with like 50 million um, attachments that make it even more useful. But that's what it is. Yeah, a fast food check, like a McDonald's is a franchise, isn't it? I've watched the... the uh, Michael Keaton did a movie about McDonald's, didn't he? Where the guy came into the company, uh, took over and kind of like, you know, through contracts and, 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 and whatnot, made himself the owner of the company and took it over took it away from the people that came up with the concept of time and motion study inside a small restaurant with a limited number of um, uh, menu items. All right, for this one, I think we should kill more aliens in the mission, seeing as we're creaming through them. I'm now in the UK it does operate somewhat as a franchise. I don't know what the buy-in is or whatever, but they operate as though they're a global network company, so like they'll have a certain burger that's on for this month only. You know, and all the rest of it, and they all adhere to that. So they're all sort of doing the same thing at the same price at the same time. <laughs> I mean, the product is crap. The best thing about McDonald's are the sauces they, they put on their burger. The burger itself is terrible. If you order any anything off their menu with... Um, no salad, no pickle, and, and no sauce, please, and eat that. You'll you'll realise just how pretty bad that burger is. It's the rest of it that they make, you know, the sauces and whatnot, that make it taste like it's something better than it is. But without them, it's like, Ugh. it's not very good. This is, this is a bit, ugh. All right, we've exited. We have one alien perk. Um, mutate? No, I think we're going to go... Can we do... Can't do any of the useful ones yet. Do primary genome, why not? Because at this level, it's the only one we can get. Cost as much... To go to the damn sit down now. 
It's always been the same in the UK. You know, the drive through versus um, sitting inside the restaurant. It's always been the same price. I don't know if that's because it's the UK or something, but... You can buy four Angus frozen Angus beef burgers, which is really high quality beef patty uh, for the same price as a McDonald's uh, burger. Cook it at home, put fresh salad on it and, and a bun. You can make a hell of a lot better burger for the same money at home. Yeah. And there are companies that make um, I don't know if it actually is the same sauce, but it pretty much tastes the same, so. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, now and again, I like a McDonald's. But I know what it is, you know. <laughs> Well, it costs it costs quite a bit more to eat a good meal in a pub here. Pub, yeah, pub food in the UK now is on par with restaurant food. Um, absolutely is. In fact, it's about the same quality as most restaurant food, but um, is a little bit cheaper than restaurant food. because you know, it's not a swanky restaurant that's charging for ambience it's saying look we're a pub we can cook you a decent plate of food for this price and you can sit in a pub and eat it and some people prefer the you know the the whole vibe and whatnot of being in a pub eating their food than going to a restaurant you know in a pub you can order um, batter fried fish and chips you know so french fries and say oh uh, can I have a tub of gravy with it whereas if you ask for a tub of gravy for your fish meal in a restaurant they're going to look at you like you, you, you're some kind of eccentric person well we don't eat that with that it's like well I'll do it at home you know, <laughs> give me some gravy <laughs> <laughs> went to a pub and got a bit. Yeah, quite often you will. Okay, we've capped on alien experience there. And we haven't handed the alien daily in yet. So we'll wait until... Um, the, the alien XP we've already got does a thing. And then we'll go and hand it in. But we need more regular levels, I think. We are only level 17, however. Loot, please. Bastion for free. Good luck. Yes, it is for the in-game grace giveaway. Yay. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, now and again, you know, you've had a busy day out. You just want to go home and chill. And you go, hey, you know, should we just get a McDonald's on the way home? Yeah, let's just get, yeah. And you get back and you just eat it and then just bleh, in front of the TV. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know? That's, if that was what you want to do all power to you but 
you know, if you get if you get analytical with it, you really can kind of excuse me. You can do a lot better food for the same amount of money, you know, but it won't be ready in in the same space of time. <laughs> I mean, they do a burger here, which is uh, like McDonald's do a burger called the Big Tasty, right? It's essentially a Burger King Whopper. It, the sauce and everything are so close. A and B, you'd really struggle to identify which one was which. And when that comes round, it's the most popular thing they sell. I used to have a Burger King here, but we don't anymore, so... In, you know, I mean, I've got to remember, we're in North Wales. So it made me thinking, what are you doing in a neutral backyard? Well, we've got a mission called Wasteland Recycling. Someone pointed out all those items drop in backyards. Neutral backyards. So here we are. For speed, we are killing them here. As it's a bit less legwork because <laughs> you can drop the mobs in one hit. Drops from the bio freaks, okay. <laughs> Maybe you need higher bio freaks, don't know. Alright, you're stuck in geometry, no problem. We'll go through the tunnel of win. <laughs> Alright, there's a bio freak. Nice apart. There's a part. Here's a part. There's a part. Everywhere a part. <laughs> Leets drop it? I don't, yeah. We just run around killing everything in sight. That, that's, that's my plan. In just seven days, I can make you a man. I love that movie. I love how crazy it is. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, everyone, it's called the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And if you watch it, you should watch it with um, the audience participation um, version. Because it's even funnier. Okay, we got, yeah, we got that bit. It's where people really get into it they dress up in the costume seen in the show with the makeup and everything else and they go watch it in the cinema and they all shout out at specific times um various uh responses to and preemptive things to what people say in the movie and everyone sort of joins in and does it it's really funny i mean it really is funny Raise Dan, finally a good stream. I'm sorry my other streams have been so bad, but thank you for the appraisal. Um, yeah, like so, you've got that serious, um, you know, Hollywood actor. <laughs> He's going, it was a, you know, a long and 
pendulous <laughs> something or other. And just before he says it, <coughs> the audience goes, describe your balls. Um, and then he goes, oh, long pendulous, blah, blah, blah. And, it, you know, it's just it's just silly and it's fun. And it's funny, you know. The dark and stormy night. Yeah, and... Like, they were trembling with anticipation. Say it! Patient. You know, they're just they're, they're a thousand of one of them. And the audience kind of know them all off by heart. And they all together, you know, collectively remember them all and cue each other in. It's good. It's a good time. It really is. You know? Where did I get the green sword? From Space Quest. Ark Space Quest, when the alien events still happened on the servers. That was my childhood, explains a lot. Yeah, it was fun. It was, you know, it was just a bit of fun doing something with a community of like-minded people. Just having harmless fun. That's it. That's all it is. I'm not trying to, you know, brainwash anyone or you know, just people having fun with a movie collectively. It's great. You know, what's the cheer? There's, where's the where's the harm? Where's the damage? There isn't. You know, it's just just fun. Yeah, if you you can buy or you used to be able to buy. I don't know if it's still available, but the um, they used to have the the Rocky Horror Show or the Rocky Horror double album. And the first side is just the movie with all the songs and, and whatnot um, that you can listen to on your hi-fi system. It sounds fabulous. And then they did a um, a, sec a two-album version, and the second album version is Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, Audience Participation Edition. And it, it's, it's exactly that. It's a bunch of, you know, fans of the movie and all the culture and, and in-jokes around the movie all joining in oh god he's died inside the wall we can't loot him um, joining in and, and just participating with the plot and dialogue of the film and it's great it's, it's a load of fun yeah science fiction double feature can hear it in your head yeah the songs are memorable you know and i mean the whole thing's pretty memorable and it was considered extremely risque at the time you know nowadays it's like well you know it's not that strong um yeah well we're getting plenty of parts we're just not getting a, enough variants yeah it's pretty hard to forget and then you got such an amazing cast in the movie you know um, Meatloaf, Tim Curry, all these amazing performers and actors and singers, you know. It's a fun, it, it's a fun, silly film where you just escape for a little while and have a bit of fun with it. You know, that's all it is. It's not trying to be, uh, you know, some, some big thing, right? How many bits do we need for it? It's based on recycling, so we want one, two, three, four. So, biomatter. Biomatter, done. Uh, rusty spikes. Rusty spikes. Metal scraps. Okay, we've got a metal scraps. Flexible backbone. we got flexible backbone. Uh, toxic waste. We've got toxic waste. And then augmented muscle mass. Augmented muscle mass. Right, we got them all. All six parts, yep. Double checking against the, you know, the crib sheet there. Yeah, Rocky Horror Picture Show. If you've never seen it, go watch it. It was the 70s. It was a different era. It was considered really risque and whatnot at the time. By today's kind of sensibilities, it might seem a little bit lame, but it's fun. You know, 
it's a fun film with some great songs and you know pretty interesting plot overall some amazing performances some absolute standout performances though got to think the guy who plays dr frankenfurter is also it in the original stephen king movie <laughs> <laughs> don't at me it is it's tim curry and there's only one tim curry in this world and he's, he's an absolute amazing guy you know it's just a sweet transvestite <laughs> I love it. I, I just think it's a lot of fun. And it's camp and it's silly. And it, it, it went down well in Britain um, because we've always had a tradition of um, like the Christmas pantomime where, you know, old widow Twanky's played by a middle-aged bloke in, in drag, effectively. Um, and that's normal. Kids go and watch it. They know it's a man dressed as a woman who's acting in a certain camp kind of way or whatever and it's fine it's fine it's just for fun that's it that's all it is and it was fine and fun in the 50s the 60s and the 70s and now people have got a problem with it you know it's like yeah monty python did it as well i he's a lumberjack and he the no it's uh I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I work all night and I work all day. He's a lumberjack and he's okay. He works all night and he works all day. I wish I'd been a girl. He's just like my dear mama. On Tuesdays, you know, I go out for um, scones and tea or it's some weird, yeah, something. Uh, I can't remember the whole thing. It starts off, you know. I press wildflowers. I did, did, did. Yeah, it's just it's just comedy for the sake of comedy. I put on women's clothing and hang around in bars, and like the the back inquirer slowly going, you do what? <laughs> just backing away from him, you know. Have you not seen the uh, that that episode of Monty Python? I'm amazed they allowed them to wear it during that era. I really am. But they did, and it was it was it was awesome. Uh, there's no point handing the alien daily in yet, cause we can't get the alien level. Right before we go to the Temple of Win, I mean Temple of the Three Winds. Uh, I'm going to get another beer. I shall be back. Yeah, Michael, Michael Palin as the um, as the lumberjack in question. Yeah, now go into town, buttered scones for tea. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just a bit of fun. It's just silly. You don't need it's comedy. It's not meant to be taken seriously. Uh, you know, it, it's one of them with Monty Python.
And it's like, you know, guy walks in. <clears throat> yes, I've come here for a, for an argument. No, you haven't. Well, it says on the door, this is the, <laughs> this is the office for an argument. No, it doesn't. You know, and all that sort of stuff. Um, that's not an argument, that's contradiction. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just fun. It's just silly. Don't worry about it. Oh, have a, you know, have, have a break. It, it, it's not meant to be anything other than, you know, it's just meant to make you chuckle and laugh. Have a day off, you know? This is a X parrot. Yeah, the, um, the parrot sketch is... He's not pining, he's passed on. Yeah. They they do a live show um, on occasion. And they always do the parrot sketch in it. Um, they can't get through it without breaking. And, and by breaking, it's, it's like a, a theatrical acting term where... You, you fall out of character. You, you start acting as you, you react as yourself, not the character. Uh, and that's called breaking, you know, because you're breaking character effectively. Because um, they can't stop laughing at each other and the audience. And uh, it's even funnier. One, when you watch the original um, sketch, and that's all it was the original sketch. So you watch the original sketch, and you go, yeah, this is pretty funny. Oh, wait. I'm in the temple. I should be in the subway. I'm in the wrong dungeon. <laughs> Run away. <laughs> well, this is it. When they were filming it for TV, they could cut out the mistakes, you know, the power of editing. But... On you know, doing it live on stage in front of a huge audience that know the sketch probably better than they do um, is pretty comical. Monty Python the parrot sketch live, and yeah, they break, they constantly break, but it's more funny if you're familiar with that sketch. It, you know, it's one of those, it's funnier if you know the sketch well, because you know the bits that they're messing up. And it just makes it so much funnier. So if you watch the parrot sketch, it, it's like very short. Um, and every, a lot of, any Monty Python fan will know it, but... Um, Parrot sketch live. You know, it's it's 30, 40 years later. Um They try and they're trying to do it in front of um Yeah, there you go, in July 2015. They're trying to get through it, and it takes them eleven minutes, and the original sketch is six minutes. Because they keep losing it. They just can't do it. They just can't stop laughing. Gamble! One, 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 one. Welcome to the stream. Good to see you, sir. How the devil are you? Have to watch that one now. Yeah, I know. It, it, it's, oh, wait. Did we do the, the mugger thing? Have a look. Did we talk to that lady? Can't remember. We, we best check. Where is she? She's over here. Let's see if she still needs a handbag. Yeah, we've already done that one. Okay. What have the Romans ever done for us? Yeah. Well, sanitation, irrigation, <laughs> the medicine. <laughs> yeah, the, a laundry list of why life is better with the Romans, yeah. Yeah, far from being oppressive, you know. One violent vagabond. I ignore you, mugger. I'm going to get you later. 
lead poisoning. Um, to a certain extent, yeah. They, but you've got to remember, we were still using lead plumbing. Um, there's some places in certain countries where they're still using lead for plumbing. Um, they didn't know lead was toxic. But I think it's all it's all well and good to criticise lead plumbing, but actual plumbing is what the Romans did for us. <laughs> actual you didn't have to draw water from the well, it just you know came via aqueduct. Looters Yeah, some massive feats of engineering. Flavoured that white. Yeah, well, if you don't know it's toxic, you don't know it's toxic. And people, nobody knew it was toxic until quite recently, in fact. You look at the ingredients in medicines from as early as the 19th century, and you <laughs> tell you what, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to get it on the market now. Workmen's my god, we're tearing through these guys. Mmm, mercury. Well, we were still using mercury in thermometers, we were using it in the treatment of um, felts and such that we made hats from, hence Mad Hatter. That's where it comes from, because we were breathing in mercury fumes all day. It wasn't until later that... I mean, the Victorians... So, post... Um, you know, the Declaration of Independence and all the rest of it, people were still... Um, believed in... didn't believe in... hadn't discovered bacteria and still believed in machinima. Uh, not machinima. Uh, mishma. They thought disease passed through some sort of ethereal um, ether that you couldn't see. You know, they believed that's that's how it happened because they hadn't discovered what you know bacteria and whatnot are. There are people alive today in positions of power who do not believe in bacteria and germs. You know, and that should worry you. You know, I had a microscope when I was eleven years old. I knew what it was. I could see it. Um, tiny little animal. You know. Now, it was the treatment of the felt itself was done with uh, mercury and um, boiling water and such. Severely dangerous. Yeah, flat earth. I mean, Jesus, we've known the earth isn't flat for thousands of years. I mean, you only need to be 300 metres above, you know, sea level and you can clearly see it. I mean, I, I can see it pretty much at ground level, but it depends on, you know, your, your eyesight and your perception to a larger, a greater or lesser degree. But I, I can easily see it, um, the curvature of the earth. And you got to remember, I grew up in a place with mountains and the ocean, so it was super duper obvious from the get-go. And we're on a ball, you know, so... Yeah, you know, 300 meters. You can it, it, most most people are able to detect that curvature. You know, people that uh, can't get their heads around, um, gr you know, gravity working the way it does, etc. Well, well, that's a problem. That, that's concerning because there's, there's a lack of mature. You know, there's there's a lack of intellect there. That there's something missing where the connection can't be made. Like some neurons are just not firing, you know? It's kind of a shame.
What I don't get is they believe the moon, Mars, the rest of the solar system. All those planets, yeah, they're round. They're spherical. But the Earth itself is flat. So this, we've got apparently have this solar system where the Earth is flat, but everything else is round. Well, that's a special kind of stupid. Yeah, I, well, that's it. I don't know if they... Are they deliberately being obtuse or are they just not very clever? I mean, I wouldn't expect a dog, even the smartest dog on the planet, to understand the world is a sphere. Because dogs don't think about things like that. You know? Premature patterns is what we require. So we can find it. Premature pattern. Missed. Huh? Missed the get? Oh, there we go. Hit it that time. Yeah, snack. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, a dog that's, that's not a pedigree, therefore not inbred to the point of, you know, retardation. Um. It's about as smart as the average two to five year old. And if it's a collie, you know, seven, eight year old, um, they're pretty intelligent animals. I mean, with a collie, you can stand in front of it, pick up a ball, put it in your mouth, turn around in a circle and put it down in front of the collie and the collie will pick it up and copy what you just did. A pretty smart. Now, I could understand the world was round because at five years old, I could look out of our garden and see it. We lived a few hundred feet above um, sea level in the Vale of Cluid, and if you looked out over the Vale of Cluid, you could see that it did that very big round thing. It was clearly visible. And then you'd go down to the coast and ships would come in and you'd see the mast. And they'd, it was like they were doing this over the brink of something round. So in your mind's eye, you could see that, oh, so we must be on something round. It was so clearly obvious. You know, even even to my single digit uh, years old self I could see it so <laughs> it was it was damned obvious I mean the ancient civilizations knew it as well <laughs> all right someone come and break this route Mackie, welcome to the stream. It's quite funny when you get the Flat Earthers uh, setting up a, you know, like they, they make a video where they're going to disprove it and then their experiment actually proves that it is round. <laughs> I love those videos. I think there's one uh, where they're at, it, it's the middle of the, you know, it's, it's late at night. Um, so it's pitch black outside. Uh, and they're at some huge lake or something. Uh, so they set all these boards up at the same level. So they're all at effectively the sea level or whatever. And then they've all got a hole, a, a certain, you know, height above the absolutely flat sea level. Because water's flat, right? 
water's flat um and then after so many um like about a mile they go okay shine the torch and you'll see now that the light is parallel because the the ground is flat or you know the sea level is flat and they shine it he goes you shine the torch yeah i'm shining the torch can you lift your torch up and they lift the torch up and then they suddenly see it and they're like oh <laughs> they're kind of proving themselves wrong in every single thing <laughs> experiment all oh, will governments keep they can't even bloody keep the, the the silly stuff secret they're not keeping the earth is a different shape than we're telling you secret give any government too much credit yeah the uh, the earth's actually flat but the government doesn't want you to know okay why don't they want you to know well they just don't want you to know yeah but why what 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 is it they're, they're afraid of you knowing it what difference does it make <laughs> okay say the world's flat What's the advantage in keeping it a secret? Well, that's not the important bit. Well, I think it is. Um, <laughs> it's just so fucking asinine. Control. Yeah, we want to control what you think, even though we gain nothing from it. That's not what control's about. <laughs> you've missed the you've missed the concept of control. What's the green stig you got? Ah, right, it's the green sword. Quite literally. There you go. Green sword, only available on 2019. Can't get it on the live server. You see anyone with one of these on the live server, where it's... I mean, you can get a green uh, sword that looks the same um, from various Halloween packages we've had over the years, like the, the hizzy armor thing. But it, it, it's a social item and it does 1-1 one, one damage and that's it. These are visually the same, but they do 225 to 750 damage. And have zero skill requirement to equip. So yeah, pretty powerful. No, they're not spraying mind control chemicals from... Yeah, chemtrails, that's a good one. <laughs> That always really makes me laugh. Yeah, most of what you're seeing is essentially water vapour. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember saying to someone, it's just water vapour. Well, why does it look like that? Well, any combustion engine produces water vapor as a byproduct of of combustion. Well, why does it look like that? My car doesn't do that. Yeah, well, your car's not going three hundred plus miles an hour at an altitude of thirty thousand feet. <laughs> Where the temperatures are com and pressures are completely different. What? I mean. Did you pay any attention in school? I mean, come on. Yeah, in the, the Earth's hollow. No, no, it's really not. You could drill down to the centre of the Earth. Right. The crust of the Earth is like an apple skin on an apple. And I mean a big-ass apple. And the deepest we've ever gone is like 27 miles down, which is not even all the way through the skin of the apple. And the drill bit melts, even though it's only six inches circumference or something. The Earth is hollow. A red journey towards the centre of the Earth. It's a great, great story. But it's not true. It's almost like rockets leave the same trails, yeah. 
I mean, they are effectively a combustion engine. Um, it's not the same kind of engine. Well, it's burning something to propel itself forward. So, yes, it is. Um, you know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what's gone wrong, you know. It's lead paint. I, you know, I don't know what, what the problem is, really. But it's definitely a problem. You know, people are so willing to believe a lie with no proof before they believe thousands of years of established knowledge. I mean, I, I quoted something to someone a couple of months back in a, a Twitch chat. And they were, they were talking about work and, you know, how many hours of work, how many hours a week and all that. I said, well, pre the Industrial Revolution, we didn't operate like that. It was like this. Oh, and where's your proof? I said, any library you care to mention. It's documented history. Well, give me a link. And I went, www.erlibrary, you should go to one, dot com. You know... <laughs> How do I know this book is accurate? Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, God, I'm rooted. I'm well and truly rooted here. I'm just killing stuff for the funds. I don't think I could kill the, um, the boss here, though. I do not. There we go. We're just killing random mobs at this point. Yeah, peer-reviewed scientific article. How do they know? Because it's a peer-reviewed scientific article. And all the other scientists have looked at it and agreed that it's correct and that the uh, research is thorough and accurate. That, that's what peer-reviewed means. Oh, God. Yeah, I saw there was some comment by a scientist. This really came to the fore during, um, like, COVID and all that. Suddenly everyone thinks they're smarter than a virolo a vir a virologist? A scientist of viruses and diseases. You know, uh, study um, medical science for, for 12 years, uh, pass a postdoc doing XYZ, do six more years of research and blah, 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 blah. Um, publish the research and pass it through peer review. You know, another three years. Random guy on the internet. Bullshit. Bullshit, man. Bullshit. I know better. Could you close your mouth while you're speaking? <laughs> Lotus, is there any skill? No, zero. I mean, literally, you can put this on at level one. Look, you can see there, see? It just, there's no skill requirement. You can put this on at level one without spending IP. Your chance of hitting anything is still your AR versus their defense and evades and ACs. People can use it in PvP. No. You can only use it on the 2019 server. It is nuts. It's only available on the 2019 server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You cannot get this weapon. If you have this weapon, if you're found to have this weapon on the live server, instant ban. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on 2019. We're on 2019. Yeah, if if someone suddenly uh, hit you with this on the on the live server, just report them. They shouldn't have the item. They've they've used some third party software or whatever. 
um, to spawn it on the other server. It does not exist on on the live server. It's on the lower population, paid only, um, more communal-led, community-driven 2019 server. Regardless of faction on this server, everyone's like, Oh, hi! You know, do you need anything? Um, we've got these buffs, we've got this, we've got that. It, you know, it, it's a very, very different environment. Um, they they would never let you have something like this on the live server because you assholes would do, <laughs> you know, this is kind of true. Um, would do X, Y, Z. And they're right, we would. We're bad people. Yeah, it's not even lootable. Uh, they were given out at events and the like. So if you were at the event, it would be spawned in your inventory like a, you know, uh, GM such and such a person t-shirt. And it just so happens because I was helping to kind of like raise awareness of the uh, alien events on both servers that Space Quest went here and gave me like spawn <laughs> so many that I had to keep like buying bags and um like emptying my overflow uh, in order to grab all of them and then give them away to people randomly can you kill Abby with it uh, not on this character no they've got like no gear you're still as vulnerable as you would normally be, and your chance of hitting is still AR versus defense, ACs, um, evades, you know, so it still has to pass the, the normal calculator, even though it's a, an awesome weapon. But it's got super duper low crit, which me and the super low uh, MBS, given its base stats, so that beyond like level 100, it's not that great. But at low levels, it, it's a real boon because, um, you know, you, you're kind of like super powered with it. But it just means, you know, you can get through your early levels pretty easily. That That's why it exists, just to make life a little more, um, a little easier on the, you know, the 2019 server. I've killed Abby with it on a level 25 before now on a keeper with outside buffs and, and whatnot yeah no problem handed him his arse um you know you've gone in there with hack and quack and reflect and you're like <laughs> splat i'll be dead yeah totally But uh, when it comes, it does make you super defensive, though. So it's not like, you know. <laughs> We've done it before on, on different characters that, that are uh, lower level than this. Or the same level as this. We're like level 24, but we're walking around in level 10 implants with crap armor and, you know. And not much in the way of NCU space or buffs. So, the character's not OP by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, look! Why are you shooting at me, dude? You not see me on the poster? <laughs> I'm famous.
I was hoping to get enough levels to get the next alien level, but <laughs> that hasn't happened, so. What level will you gear up? I don't know. I, I, I make a lot of tunes that I don't take very seriously and then, you know, kind of half abandon them later. I am I'm a very bad person. So, yeah. At least in that regard, you know, I mean, hey. If I'm doing a let's build a tune. Oh, yeah, there's also a buff bot. Um, I don't know for how long. On the 2019 server that's been set up, it's for the Iron Man crew that are currently playing, so... So every single one of these is a paid account character because there's nothing else on this server. Uh, I can't have hack and quack. I don't have the NCU. Oh well. But they have now got hack and quack as well, which means someone on the uh, Iron Man crew has finally gotten hack and quack on their character. Buff bots are the best thing they've ever come up with. Yeah, and it's all player based. It's not Funcom. Um, yeah, it is a lot of work. If you want to go and check out the guys that um, that manage these and run them, and or you know, even if you just want to uh, stop by and just thank them, uh, which is you know a nice thing to do, then they've got their own Discord. So if you want to go and just say, hey guys, thanks so much. You know, I really appreciate what you've done. There you go, there's the Discord link to their server. Go and tell them how awesome they are um, uh, and how you enjoy using what they've built, you know. And you've got to remember, not after you built it, you've got to keep it going. So it's not simple, you know. You know, if you're a, a Megabucks long-term player and you want to donate a grace to them so they can keep it going, why not? Hey, you know. Let's have a look at another character on this server. Bitnik, welcome to the stream. Who makes my favourite um, Shadowlands map? Gammy Wizard, level 31. Gamil, one, 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 one. Welcome to the stream. We'll be back in a minute. Uh, I'm just re-logging to a different character. Right, okay, so let's have another look at... Oh, no, not again! Mathematica, have a good night, Carl. All. Oh, I'll see you later, sir. Right, okay, so let's just say that with there. Over there, I see a gamble who's looking... He's looking a bit horny. I should back away. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, we're nearly leveled. I've got to play this character. Right, okay, I'm going to get another beer. I won't bother with intermission because it'll only be gone for like a minute. Uh, I'll be back.
Gamel, good night. No, it's Mathematica, I think, not Gamel that's going. Oh, math no, sorry, Mathematica is saying good night to Gamel. <laughs> the eyesight's going. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Right, okay. <laughs> right, okay. So we're on our little keeper. Well, he's 109 now, but I mean, you know, he's not he's not big boy stuff yet. But, you know, he's obviously a bit more advanced than the other one. We tried doing smugglers and the social aggro just drove me nuts last time. I just, oh, I just couldn't be doing with it. It was too much. Like, um... <clears throat> Compared to a lot of the other dungeons, it's one of the worst for social aggro. Really fucking annoying, you know. You go in one room and suddenly 45 other mobs have chased you in from somewhere else and you're like, oh my god, just no! Yeah, it's so annoying. Ooh, we got one foggy hill. Okay, we'll take that. I'm not sure. Should we try and do Crypt of Home? I always get incredibly lost in there. <laughs> Where can you offer me? Go on, we'll do Crypt of Home. Just, just for a diff. Getting in there, though, is pain in the arse. Yeah, I haven't done Crypt of Home in ages. I can't remember the layout. I've never really memorised the layout, so I get lost in there a lot. Oh God, sticky goo. Oh, it's sending us so far afield. I don't know what to do. Right, okay. I'm gonna have to go broken shores, I guess. Well, we've got a Yalm and we've got a Yalm Nano. Which is even better because it's even faster. There it is. Ain't pretty. Some people think it is, uh, but it is quick quick check in with Stella I think we did before but yeah nothing on Stella you have a yawn in real life okay <laughs> says due to I mean Alvaran you've seen it in Storms oh yeah the, the 3D print that's pretty awesome that yeah I, I did see it in the store in the uh, storm chat and yes it is pretty cool yeah not gonna lie do you want me to share it with chat? There you go. Got a couple of elites and a 3D printed yarn. Eh? Eh? That's pretty awesome, that. I mean, the contours and everything look pretty spot on to me. Yeah, due to um, from Storm. That's that's who um, Aileran is on on the Discord. So. Sorry, that's who Aileran is on, on Twitch. You know me, I'm so inventive using the same name for everything. <laughs> but at least you can find me. Loki Muck. Much. No, Muck. Loot, please. Good luck. Let's find the sticky alien goo. It's just what have the aliens been doing, man? 
that's the guy that made the file he also sells them pre-printed and painted yeah he, he was asking about that and i was saying be careful my dude if you haven't had um permission He was like, well, why? And I was like, well, because they will come after you for that, <laughs> for some reason, you know. They uh, Complain about problems in the game. Silence. Make profit of, you know, the smallest denominations imaginable from their IP. Oh, ton, bloody send the five bloody armies of hell, you know. It's now a lot of companies operate, unfortunately. Infringe our copyright. <laughs> Five million troops and letters and emails and yeah. Excuse me, this portion, this thing in the game is broken. Yeah, okay. We'll look at it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, I'm going to right click from inventory. I don't think that worked. Oh, that worked that time. I think that. It didn't count the first one for some reason. It didn't play any music at me anyway. I'd have just, just bought it for him. Well, I, I'm not going to go out and buy a 3D printer to make one. That's a bit of an investment. <laughs> you know, if you're going to do a ton of other stuff. Yeah, I wanted to do the um, ICC where frame rates go to die t-shirt. And I actually asked uh, one of the PR people at Funcom um, if I could have permission to do it. And they said, oh, I'll, I'll refer it back to such and such a team. And then the such and such a team wanted to know exactly how many units, what I would be charging, how long I would be running them for. Uh, you know, they wanted an entire business plan. It was like, no, I just wanted permission to do use the logo, and they were like, well, no, then <laughs> you can you can do uh, your your catchphrase, and you can use the words ICC. And I was like, Tr well, try and stop me doing that. But I was like being upfront, and you know, let's let's do it all properly, kind of thing about. You know, using the AO icon, uh, logo icon. And yeah, they got super serious really fast. Oh my god, these things are way tougher than I thought. They're usually green. No, no, no. Oh my god. These things are usually trash mobs. I just got owned. Yeah, like Disney refusing to let a father put. Don't, uh, um, Sony own Spider-Man rather than Disney. I'm not sure. Anyway, but yeah, these, these, I'd you just fucking done it. Fuck yeah. Yeah, do you want the PR disaster that is you coming after a grieving father for putting his son's, you know, final wish on his gravestone? Do you want that PR do you do you know how much that will cost you in real terms is that what you want you morons come after me you know that, as a grieving father i'm pretty sure that's my would have been my attitude uh so yeah you want those headlines do you do you really I'm not being a karen but do you really want to go there you know Yeah, Sony, yeah, because they made the the um, the first three movies, didn't they, Sony? Yeah, it happened in the UK with the post office scandal. Um, for 20 years, we knew about it. For 20 years, we knew these postmasters were being, through the civil courts, um, chased for tens of thousands of pounds 
ruining their their life savings, their you know their lives, their livelihood uh, by the post office for a fault in the software they used for accounting at sub post offices, and the post office knew there was a fault with that system. They'd been told about it by Fujitsu, who supplied it to them, right? And they still went after them. And it wasn't until um, they made a a short TV series about one particular person from who operated a sub post office in the town I live in, and I know it, and I've used it in the past, and I've met them, you know, through the glass, just sending a letter or whatever that you use the post office for. Um, and it, it, they made a, 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 a short kind of series about a dramatization of what happened. And that completely changed, that suddenly put it in um, the public's eye. Yeah? So suddenly the public was way well aware of it, you know? And then all of a sudden the government steps in and says, oh yes, we should do X, Y, Z, you know? Bullshit. And they knew about it all along. They knew going after these people was emphatically wrong. They'd done nothing wrong. They could prove with pen and paper they'd done nothing wrong. They could prove with the banking detail they'd done nothing wrong. But because the bloody broken software kept saying, well, you know, there's uh, something wrong with... um, you're, you know, you're missing so many thousand off, off this quarter. They went after them for it. Even though they could categorically prove they hadn't taken anything. But then they've got bigger lawyers than th- those guys. And, oh, it was sickening. Absolutely sickening level of hateful... Um... <laughs> Thanks. Hatefully bad um, uh, persecution of people, and there were hundreds of them were affected. Over nearly a thousand of them were affected, and they were telling each and every individual one of them that it was just them, and it wasn't. They were turning up at a dozen, you know, thousands of these sub post offices and telling them, well, it's only you we've got a problem with, when that was emphatically a lie. And since that one TV show, it moved into uh, the stratosphere, the whole country was aware of it and went, this isn't right. You can't do that to people, that's wrong. You know, and. and yeah, it, it, it's had the desired effect, but it should never, ever, ever have taken, you know, for it to get to the point where that's where we're at. Nothing happens unless it's in the court of popular opinion. It should never have happened in the first place, but it did. Yeah, it's disgusting. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, getting off topic, I guess. But, yeah, so, the, you know, if... if if I if I had a child and their their dying wish was I you know I I would like for Spider Man on my gravestone I just do it I don't give a shit if Sony or any other company care I just do it. You want me to take that gravestone down, son? Well, let's put it to the public opinion because I tell you what, that's one quick way to get your movie boycotted and everything else because ain't nobody gonna side with you how how is that threatening their business a gravestone what people are going to visit a person's gravestone a person they don't even know's gravestone rather than go and see your next fucking movie fuck off you know what I mean? Uh, 
And I said, well, I tried to do it the nice way, so I'm just going to do it now. And if you come after me for it, good luck. They didn't make money off it, so it's bad. Yeah, well, if you want to put that out to the general public, see what they think of you. And how many of them are not going to go and see your next movie. Good luck with that. Do you want to know how many billions you're going to lose doing that? Is that sickening? It's amoral, you know? It's wrong. In your heart of hearts, you just know that's wrong. Right, I got my buffs, and we are going back for more punishment. <laughs> All right, let's go. Yeah. Just that alone has made me go, I will never buy a Sony product again. There you go, Sony. Th this is what happens when you make these decisions. I've just heard this from a person I've never met, and they've already made me think, I will never buy one of your products again. Any of them. If it's got your name on it, I'm not going to buy it. I don't care if it's cheaper or better. I'm still not going to buy it. Price is too high. Yeah. Anyone with any sense would have offered to... Yeah. Any smart company, right, like you say, would have gone, Oh, God, really? Oh, I'm so... We're so sorry to hear this, this news. Um, we'll, we'll do the whole grave site completely for free for you. Um, just tell us what you need. We'll do it. And, and we'll supply everything. It's the least we can do for a fan. Anyone with a f couple of neurons sparking together could have figured out what a massive PR uh, win that could be for you. Right? And I say, like, oh, God, that, you know, to lose your child, I mean, it must be the most heartbreaking thing in the world. I can't even imagine the, the pain you're in. The very least we could do, you know, is that, and we will, whatever you want, we're just going to do it, and we'll we'll pay to maintain it for fifty years, you know. There, there you can't. <laughs> that's millions and millions and millions of pounds worth of PR right there for glumpens. Even if you're the most callous, heartless person on the planet who doesn't feel some empathy for that father you know how are you so stupid you can't see the potential in that even as a cold callous marketing exec how stupid are you you know Are you so goddamn out of touch with humanity that that's how your brain is firing? What's wrong with you? Yeah? You, you feel me there? Let's say I don't feel empathy for that poor father and, and, and sadness that he's lost his child. Let's say I don't, and I do. Okay. All right, that's that alien mission done. We didn't get our ass kicked. Oh, my God. Um, even if I'm a cold stone calculating son of a bitch, that's a massive marketing opportunity for nothing. That's free real estate, to quote the meme, you know? Oh, when we heard the news, we, you know, we had to do something. Boom! Everyone loves you. Court of public opinion, you're the good guys. You know? Wouldn't take much. It's going to cost you what? If it cost half a million, so what? You spend that on poster design for a movie, it's nothing. That's some just plain old dumbassery.
That's plain old dumb ass shit, that is. Okay. That will that lives on in the public's perception of of your products. Oh, these are the good guys. These guys care, you know. They absolutely care. Even if they don't, even if they're like, well, I don't actually give a shit, but hey, free real estate, right? It doesn't matter. You say the right words in the right way in front of the audience and you're a winner. It's win-win in that situation. Saying no, saying no to a grieving father, you asshole. You utter fucking asshole. And that's how people now view you. You know, you're, you're lower than scum. Honestly, it just it, I don't get that mentality. There's something bloody wrong with these people. Why are they sociopaths or whatever? There's something, you know, not quite right in the wire in there, is there, you know? Right, how did this work again? Okay, kill some trash. Okay. Yeah, and the father, being a stand-up guy, does the right thing, asks for permission. And they do that. That's a special level of stupid. from a completely heartless calculating way that's a special level of stupid with that take all the empathy and emotion out of it it's still the wrong fucking call you idiots Yeah, if, if he hadn't have done it, they'd never have known anyway. Exactly. And did they really want that image of them having the grave tombstone removed because it's an infringement of copyright? Do they really want that? Do you really want to put that in the public perception of you as a company? You don't, do you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's some serious... Fecking idiots out there. Just hearing that, I will never buy a Sony monitor, TV, anything ever. Then I will never buy a PlayStation. I want nothing to do with that company ever again. For that level of stupidity. There you go, Sony. Just that one decision has cost you a customer. And I tell you what, ain't no way in hell it's just me. Right, let's try and do this bullshit. I'm going to need help, I think. Yeah, I'm going to need help to do this. I'm not, I don't run quick enough. I'll try again. Right, hang on. Turn the camera.
Oh, don't lag. No, I need anyone on 2019 give, give me a hand to actually enter this stupid ass dungeon. <laughs> Disney been on my shit list ever since, yeah. Well, a lot of their executive decisions have been just so out of touch lately. I mean, they're quite happy to do the Pandaverse movies, but the way they actually treat real people is pretty shit. Not going to lie. They didn't want their characters to correlate with death. Well, now your company is correlated with um, greed, selfishness, stupidity. Take your pick. That was their excuse. The excuse is right. The reason is we're not making anything out of it. That's the reason. Don't want our characters to be correlated with death. Well, then you probably shouldn't have killed um, one of the characters in your movie, then. You killed Gwen Stacy. Death is a fact of life. You don't want the, the bullshit. You don't want it. No, you're too stupid to know what's good for you. That's the problem. Yeah, Uncle Ben, Gwen Stacy. <laughs> and, and, and as for the whole MCU, Bruce Banner's parents... Um, Superman's entire race, homeworld and parents. Do you want me to carry on? Because there's a lot. Um, Captain America, okay. Peggy, everyone he ever knew. You know, it, it's it's kind of an endless, endless list of... You know... Uh, <laughs> these things happening death being a part of life being part of your journey that's reality yeah the, 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 the Avengers form because Carlson dies it's like they've never watched their own movies these guys they've never watched them they've never read the material they have no idea what they're making there's just a special kind of stupid involved here. I mean, there really is a special kind of stupid. Oh, here's someone talking about Avalon. There we go. We're going to do a Tara tag because it just spawned. Creative team and... Yeah. I'm sure, you know, the camera crew on one of the movies would have thought about this in the same way I'm speaking about it now I'm quite sure but unfortunately they're not the people that make executive decisions the executives are and do you know what makes a good executive in corporate the corporate business model a sociopath that's what makes a successful <laughs> executive in in that world and that's a big problem and that's why they make the decisions they have that's why when you hear the decision they've made you're like what's wrong with you what is your malfunction you know because if you've got one grain of empathy you would realize what a massive PR boost it would be even if the only thing that may motivates you is profit from a completely callous uh, viewpoint it's still the right thing to do
Instead, you've painted yourselves as complete and utter assholes. Heartless, uncaring assholes. That's what you've done. Kids here, uh, yeah. Spider Man would have come to his gr come to his funeral. You know what I'm saying? Peter Parker would have shown up. Peter Parker would have shown up, and he'd have cried his eyes out. He'd have tried not to cry. But he'd have turned up, said some words, and cried his eyes out. Telling you, I, I used to read the Spider-Man comics, annuals, summer specials, etc. When I was a kid in the 70s, Spider-Man would have shown up for that. Because Spider-Man's not a fucking arsehole. <sighs> Sorry, getting on one here, but... <laughs> that annoys me. No, the, the actual Spider-Man, he'd have turned up, he'd have said some kind words... Um, he'd have been he'd have spent time with the remaining family you know none of this other bullshit right let's, let's try and enter Cryptovome again I can remember why I hate Cryptovome even as much as that Do you know what let's, let's have a breather from stupid dungeon design um I'll go and do some wreck missions. Yeah, if I was in that position, I'd be doing the same goddamn thing, you know? Quick check in with Stella. Nope. Oh, let's refresh that um, XP buff. Let's go and do that. Yeah, that's, that's just one of the strangest, stupidest corporate kind of mealy mouth bullshit I've ever heard in my life. That that whole thing needs more attention. Is there an event in April? No, Madison. Uh, the Desert Nomads appear on the birthday anniversary. So, like, July, really. Yeah, it's like late June, early July. You get the, the Nomads and the Desert Rider and all the rest of it. There are still people in this world who watched the original Christopher Reeve's Superman movie, right? And think Superman reversed time on Earth. Now, bear in mind, this was a movie aimed at children. Older children, yes. But there are still people that think, well, he just reversed time, though. How, how did he keep his promise and, and, and do that? No, no, no. He went back in time so he could keep the promise to the lady that took off the Krypton necklace off him and save Lois and other people 
while his other self was still there those 20 minutes or so beforehand saving the people he promised her he would save superman took himself back in time not the planet and i've seen discussions about how he couldn't move the planet back in time it's like well he didn't that's not what the mo- that w- what <laughs> you know, you're kind of like scratching your head a little bit So he promises the lady, like um, Lex Luthor's girlfriend, yeah, if you take this, the, the Krypton necklace off me that I can't, I'm going to drown with round my neck off me. I will save your mother first. And he does. But then he goes into the outer orbit of the planet, goes so fast he goes back in time. We see the visualization of time reversing for him and then turns up in time to save Lois Lane and, and everyone else. So he puts himself in two places at once with Einstein's relativity. And yet, and I understood this in, when did this come out? 78, so I was what, nine? And I got that. We've got grown ass adults who don't get that now <laughs> from watching the film. And I'm like, there's no hope for any of us. Ugh, yay. You know, just while I'm having a rant, I thought I'd have a general rant, and that's something that's always bothered me. Um, but yeah, there, there you go. So we go, you know, so he saves the people he promised to save, because he's Superman and he keeps his promises. Then he goes back in time despite against his father's wishes who appears in the clouds you know Marlon Brando makes an appearance goes back in time and saves the people he wants to save so he's putting himself in two places at once and then he's kept his promise and done what he wants to do at the same time knowing that after he's gone back in time to the, the, the to the second period in time where he's his future self back in time, that his former self is doing what he did the first time and then vanishing from the earth because they've gone back in time and then time can just roll forward normally. It's a very neat, tidy plot point and, and time travel-y, timey-wimey stuff that is all nicely tied up with a bow and yet people still think he somehow moved the earth back in time it's like what it's, sorry what <laughs> because they did the re- i think because they did the reverse um footage part of it people have come away with just the visual not the concept it's like somehow they've missed it, you know? Yeah, I think the visuals of just people are so in awe of the visual they've missed the, the more um, cerebral concept of what's going on. And at nine years old, I got it, and I'm not spe- especially intelligent. I'm really, really not. Um, uh, I got it. I, I don't quite know why anyone else didn't. So, hey, there you go. Right, we have the missions. So now we've also got flight. So I'm going to go and do the crates mission because that's nice and easy. Especially if you have flight. And I'm also going to go and get another beer.
Yeah, draw it on. You, you got it. Like I say, I'm old, so I saw it in the cinema, aged nine. Yeah, and I understood it, but I grew up on Doctor Who, so maybe that helped. I don't know, but um, yeah. And it doesn't create a paradox because he won't meet himself because they're on opposite part. You know, they're in different places in the same time frame. But for some reason, people still think. And I can't get... I find it difficult to understand why they think that. That, oh, he made the planet go backwards in time. Get off me. This is the right crate. I've done this many, many times. There we go. Um, Why they... I don't know why they don't get it. <laughs> I'm like, how do you not get it? But there you go. More, yeah, people play more. Yeah, but the, to me, the visuals were saying he's moving backwards in time. Not he's moving time backwards. It's just, I, I don't get how you don't get it. Avatar was amazing. Amazing looking. I, I quite enjoyed the, the plot. It's nothing new. It was a retelling of a you know older story, but yeah, it still worked for me. I really enjoyed Avatar, especially the first movie. And yeah, it did look amazing. It was good, not amazing. Well, Eye of the Beholder there, isn't it? If you've never experienced that story, then, and it's the first time you're experiencing that story, then it probably has a more profound effect on you than someone that's aware of this story, um, as well as the stunning visuals. I mean, it was technically groundbreaking. It was visually groundbreaking. Um, and for people that have never seen Fern Gully or what's Fern Gully based on? It's based on an older story, yeah, but for for people that are unaware of the, you know, dances with wolves kind of thing, then, yeah, it, it, it's groundbreaking because they've never heard that story before. You know, whether it's amazing or not is truly in the eye of the beholder. I was aware of that story, so it wasn't oh my god what an amazing concept because oh yeah yeah i know this this tale but i still enjoyed it and visually i, I thought it was amazing you know and visually it was it looked like the place was for real you know it, it, it was very very well made Isn't there supposed to be a thing? Oh well. <laughs> yeah, I guess... I mean, it, it was promoted largely on the visuals, and the visuals were amazing. They just wear. I've still got the mission for this. Even though I've just destroyed the tower. So I'm not quite sure what happened there. But okay. We're gonna we're gonna wait for a respawn. Oh did I kill the wrong tower? I think oh maybe I did. I think I killed the wrong tower. Yeah, before I saw Dances with Wolves, I saw um, Little Big Man. What the hell? What is it with this server and random aggro? Oh my god. Can I... Yeah, yeah thank you, game. I just want to hit this. 
they mashed the Matrix into phone go- Well, yeah, but before the Matrix, some people have never seen the Matrix and seen Avatar. I remember watching uh, the Matrix for the first time and thinking, "Oh my God, this is incredible." I think the the Matrix was more impactful than than Avatar. Yeah. because uh, we just never ever seen anything like it and if you're not aware of a lot of science fiction stuff then the, the concepts in the film etc are just like mind-blowing to a general audience And it really is a very, very cool movie as well. I mean, that movie, even though... How many years old is it now? 20, 25 years old now? It's still great. I can still watch it now and enjoy it. I'll tell you my first experience with The Matrix, and I think there's another guy who's told the exact same story, but it happened the same way for me. Um, so not not borrowing from them, but I had the same experience, which was um, we were talking about going to the cinema with a, with a friend of mine back when you went to the cinema far more often than you do today instead of just waiting till it comes out on... XYZ streaming service for a new movie um, you, you had to wait for rental release then disc you know media release or, or you know whatever <clears throat> so you actually went to the cinema a lot more often um, oh the new Star Wars was coming out right the new Star Wars and then there was this new film that a lot of people were talking about called The Matrix and we didn't really know what it was about we'd seen some clips it looked really cool but we didn't know what it was um and, and we made the decision right here's what we do right the new star wars movie right we'll go and see that after we've seen this other new movie because you know if we watch the new star star wars movie you know this this other movie is going to seem rubbish isn't it yeah it will it'll seem rubbish even if it's good yeah what we should do then is we'll go watch this new upstart movie that we, we don't know much about um and then we'll go and see the new star wars because the new star wars is going to be you know it's going to be so much better that it's going to make the new this matrix whatever the hell that is movie seem rubbish and we genuinely thought that right we genuinely thought yeah so we're gonna go we'll go see matrix first and then tomorrow night we'll go back to the cinema and we'll watch the new star wars yeah that's the plan so we went to the cinema watched the matrix walked out of the matrix like mind blown right completely my, like what the f uh, that was uh, what was that you know just absolutely like gobsmacked what an amazing time we just had at the cinema so the next night oh i can't wait for star wars now i'm hyped i'm hyped and then following watching the matrix went to watch the phantom menace and went not a hacking okay was so bad it was so so bad the difference going and seeing the matrix for the very first time virtually blind and going uh, and then walking out the cinema going oh my god they've got to make a sequel to this you know and then watching the phantom menace and going is this Bugs Bunny guy you what the fuck is this shit um and all the rest I mean it had some cool moments and all the rest of it but it was like quite painful to watch uh, and seeing that after the Matrix 
was like, oh, dude, George, my dude, no. You know, it, it, oh, it, it, it was just not good. It was just not good. Misa, what the fuck and how is this guy? <laughs> Versus fucking nowhere near as good. Nowhere near. Right, yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. It was just such a massive, I don't know, culture shock or something it, oh, it, it just yeah it was just not a good time uh, and that was in 1999 the, the best bit of the movie is um, Battle of the Fates yeah with Darth Maul and all the rest of it that was good you know Ba 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 la ba 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 la da 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 da. John Williams absolutely owning the 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 score and composition there. I mean, just oh my god, that guy's a legend. Um, that was amazing. But also, dun 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 Rage Against the Machine. F you, I won't do what you tell me. I'm not saying they're in the same place as John Williams, but also impactful music. I think maybe they, they landed there, you know? I think maybe they landed well. I've got our uh, RRFE. Okay, so I'm going to run um, the high level tune out to kill the other thing. Yeah, Rage Against Machine. An awesome band, mate. Absolute super dick terrific originals band. Yeah, so, yeah, Battle of Fates is gobsmackingly good. But at the same time, you know, I mean, John Williams is amazing, but he can't save a movie, you know. But, yeah, th I mean, the, the, the last few bit, The Phantom Edit is my favourite version of the prequels. Have you, have you heard about this, The Phantom Edit? The entirety of the first movie occupies 10 minutes of it and the rest is all the cheesy crap cut out and all the main story plots kept in for the remaining two movies. Yeah, the Phantom Edit. I think you can watch it on YouTube or you, you, you know. Um, but yeah, they, it's kind of like Jar Jar Binks barely exists um and it's about how Darth Vader becomes Darth Vader you can't tell me the original movies were cheesy AF what in the 70s no they weren't they weren't cheesy in the uh, in the 80s either are they cheesy now yeah because standards have changed No, Star Wars wasn't cheesy back then. It was the Lone Ranger. It was a Western. That's what the original Star Wars was then, which is now A New Hope or whatever. But yeah, back then, yeah. Didn't feel cheesy at all when I was eight years old. No, didn't feel, didn't seem cheesy whatsoever. Just saying, it just didn't. You were like, 
yeah, I completely accept this. This is fine. I'm okay with this. You know, and that was it. Now, I watched The Matrix the other day and it looked cheesy. Yeah, well, you know, we've just become more and more cynical as time has moved on. So, you know, there's that. But the movie in its own time and place, fucking awesome, man. I don't even find The Matrix cheesy now. I watch it now and it, there's less cheese with that than most things. You know, modern modern movie makers now that are leading the way are like y y Villeneuve is leading the way with modern cinema now. For setting the bar of, of, of what people can watch and go, yeah, this is just great. This is just an experience. I, I want to watch this again. You know... Y and they're at a level now where if they had released Dune 1 and 2 uh, 40 years ago, people's brains would have just melted out of their ears. Yeah, but the Joker's a character piece. And for some people it's difficult to watch because they're like, well, nothing's blown up yet. And... <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. It depends what you, what level you're operating at, you know? Deceptees, I better go to bed soon. You best had then, sir. I mean, don't don't lose sleep watching my shizzle. What the f... Bloody thing disappeared! How? It was supposed to be the last 30 seconds. Oh, my God. Right, I'm going to have to kill him again then. Yeah, but I don't go into a Matrix movie looking for a character piece. You know, I'll watch page eight. I'll, I'll, I'll watch the, the, the Warwick um, adaptation movies. Or Smiley's People. Tinker Tail Soldier Spy. If I want a character piece, I'll watch that. And I'm sorry, but the, the Joker movie, good as it is, and what a fantastic performance, pales in comparison to uh, Warwicker and uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. And Smiley's people, it just does. It, it's nowhere near as impactful and, and, and precise in the, the characterization. If you want a character movie, watch page eight. It's an old, I think, 70s uh, kind of modern spy novel. So by spy novel, I mean, don't expect James Bond because spy, spies aren't like that. <laughs> Page 8, uh, let me show you. I think it's on Netflix, maybe. Yeah, and it's Bill Nye. Um, Page 8. I'm not sure when it was first published or whatever, but yeah, just... I mean, the movie came out in 2011. And watch it. Just watch it. I know you're going to watch it and go, oh, it's her from uh, 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 the, 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 the Mummy, and it, it, it's Voldemort and Gandalf. Uh, not Gandalf. Um, <laughs> Dumbledore in the same movie. No, they're serious character actors, actually. Um, but yeah, page eight. Watch that. You want a character movie? Watch page eight. Fantastic. 
far and away better than Joker. I'm sorry, but it is. I mean, Joker's good, don't get me wrong, but character movie? Page 8. Buries it. Because it's an ensemble thing. Every person on screen is as big a part as Joker is in the Joker movie. And yet it got no recognition whatsoever because in 2011 people were going to see blockbusters. They weren't going to see character movies. If you like character movies, watch that. Why? Fuck off, you lot. I'm logging out. I don't care if you don't like it. I like how they dove into the mental illness required to get to that level of insanity. So easily achieved. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying it's bad because it isn't bad, but I'm saying that, you know, if a, a movie about... Oh, for fucking... I hate these random... Time log out aborted. Mob that can't even hit you is aggroing. I can't... You don't tell me what to do. Oh, for fuck's sake. Right. I'm getting annoyed with the game now. Right then. So, you're saying I can't log out. I say, fuck off. Yes, I can. I'm going to do the same again. To kill it. Get back on in time. To bloody get the reward thingy. Come on. Die, Evo assassin, you piece of shit. And you, Evo Berserker. Okay, don't you tell me I'm not allowed to log out, you piece of crap. Alt F4 twice says you can. It does. I'm going to do the same again so I can make sure I get the other bit. Okay. Ready to go. No way is this longer than 30 seconds. Therefore... Thank you. Come again. I'm going to fly to the War Chief. And I'm going to fly the other character out there as well. Oh, 
Or the war dog, rather. Right. But while I'm flying there, I'm going to get another beer. I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to. Right. I'll be back. Right, I'm back. Oh, I may have flown too far. <laughs> I thought that'd happen, but hey. Should have been quicker, right? I mean, there was another uh, Marvel movie that came out recently, was it? Something, um, Lady Web, Madam Web, something like that. And even the actors that were in it think it's crap. I mean, this is where we're at now. That's what, that's what amazed me. Instead of promoting the film and doing the PR spiel, they're going, yeah, it's not really that good, is it? Yeah, but hey, it was a job and I took it and there you go. They don't want to be tarred by that brush. You know what I'm saying? They're like, yeah, but you know, I got paid to be in it, so I did it. I'm an actor, what do you expect? They're being real about how bad these movies are these days. I don't know, some executives think, you know, pandering is, is the way to go, but pff, whatever. Uh, I'm just an actor and they paid me to be in it. My last job was selling toothpaste or, you know, whatever. So it just makes me really laugh that they're just being like the actors turn around and go, you know what? I'm just going to be real about this. Yeah, the movie's a piece of crap. Uh, we know that. I'm not promoting it. Yeah, and it's just awesome. They, they've gained more from that than uh, trying to twist anything else you know they're just like yeah we know it's bad yeah we know we 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 know it's just terrible but hey so whatever the madam web girl find her agent for it yeah don't ever book me this kind of work again <laughs> i haven't seen it and based on what i've heard there's no way i'm ever gonna i mean it'll probably turn up on disney plus or something and i'll scan through it you know just for the lols but yeah I mean I think um, the South Park team when they released Into the Pandaverse opened the floodgates for people to just turn around and say 
Why are you making this crap? Nobody cares. Nobody wants to watch it. What is it? You know, and it, it, it's quite funny. It is quite funny that, you know, they think that people don't know somehow. People say, worst superhero. Well, is anyone actually a superhero in it? I mean, Madam, what's Madam Web? I've never heard of it until this movie. I've never heard of Madam Web. Was she Spider Woman? What? What is it? Even. Superhero movies kind of came to an end with um, Avengers Endgame for me. I haven't seen anything that's come close to that. And the reason being is that that was the culmination of 10 years' work. She's a medium or something. Well, can she, you know, like climb up walls? I mean, what kind of superhero is it? I mean... there's some good tv shows out there where people are mediums and things is it like that i don't you know i genuinely don't know all i know is the cast and crew are like i don't i did i disown this movie that's what i know you know, and if it comes to the cast and crew going, I had no part in this, it's just a job, don't blame me, it, it means that, he, you know, they have zero faith in the material. Zero faith in the material. I wouldn't blame if someone booked me a job, that shit. I wouldn't want to as my agent anymore either. I've got you this big Hollywood blockbuster movie. Movie makes no money whatsoever. Um, you don't want that Jonas around your neck, do you? I mean, you, <laughs> you don't want to be remembered for it. Right, let's get the other character ready to go. There we go. Come on, come on. Clocks are ticking. Oh, was she in that? Was that her? Yeah, we got the XP. That'll do. She's in, she was in Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I never watched that because I, I don't buy into that bullshit, but... Um, is it her? Dakota Johnson? It, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Good-looking lady, whatever. She was in Fifty Shades, Fifty Shades Darker, another Fifty Shades, Madam Web. How to be single, Persuasion, Dakota Johnson. Let's see, Dakota Johnson on Madam Web. What, what she said about it, I, I'm curious now. People hated Mad Madam Web, but they were desperate to see Dakota Johnson mock it. Okay. On negative, Madam Web has opened up about how she... about the commercial and critical failure of the superhero movie. Well, is she a superhero in that? 
uh, gets candid about Madam. Yeah, so yeah, she's not gonna take the fall with the executives. She's like, yeah, it's shit. I know, I know. Look, it was a paid job. I want no. I take no responsibility. I turned up. I did my job, and I'm out. I don't blame her. Good for her. You know, this is your shit. You clean it up. You know, I, don't, I can't blame the can't blame the lady for that. You really can't. I mean, Fifty Shades of Grey is like. Imagine if you had an exciting sex life, um, and I don't need to imagine. Just saying. Uh, so yeah, it's it's never been a ja it's never been a thing for me. So yeah, good for you if you enjoyed the movie. Great, you know. But it's titillation. I mean, that's what it is. And yeah, I'm sure it was well paid work and everything else. So good for her. Um, but yeah, it's not something that interests me I think people watch Fifty Shades of Grey because it's like oh I'm watching naughty porn under the guise of you know serious cinema oh boobs yeah I mean I'm a big fan I'm a big fan very big fan. Um, I don't need to go to a movie to see them. I'm not saying uh, more than that, but yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, I know exactly what they look like, and I've seen plenty of them. And um, yeah, they're fabulous, and uh, I love them as much as everybody else, and don't need a movie to um, to know that. So yeah, great. It's not like an R-rated movie, is it? It's 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 like um I mean, I I don't think it's PG-13, but it you know, it's not far off. Yeah, it's so hard to find good stuff anymore. Yeah, I mean, you know, if a bit of BDSM is your thing, then yeah, go for it. It's not my thing, but hey, you know, if it's your thing, go for it. I'll, you know, have fun. Okay, yeah, I don't want to stop you having fun. Have fun. Um, do I want to watch a movie about it? No, no, not really. It's not my thing, you know. So whatever, you know. You know, I'm not against anyone that wants to watch it or or finds that has that kind of of a kink. I'm not going to kink shame. You know, if that's your jam, hey, hey, have fun. That's that's my take. You know, but do I want to watch a movie about it? Well, no, because it ain't really my jam. So, yeah. It, it, all power to you, but, you know, it's for you, it's not for me. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, hey, we, you know, we like different things. Uh, no harm, no foul. Yeah, that's it. I'm not, I'm not. Ugh. Ugh, you're weird. You know, no, I'm not judging anybody else for enjoying it. <laughs> for the titillation, but that's what it is. Uh, 
a little harm and foul what what's the point well yeah exactly well for me no it's not my jam but i mean if that's your jam and it's consenting adults uh, enjoying themselves fucking what am i doing that's nothing <laughs> none of my business go you do you or whoever else you want to do you know uh, if they're all happy with it then pff, great guys you've you've found some happiness and i'm i'm happy that you have that's it <laughs> you know uh i'm not being prudish i'm just saying you know maybe there's some things that um that, that, that i'm not attracted to and if you are then hey you know go with you if you're not hurting anyone uh or if you are and they're consensual and happy about it then you know what do i know <clears throat> look if, if if a bit of bdsm even you know on all of the spectrum of that which goes from like the macabre to the oh you tickled me with a feather um is your jam pff, off you go if both of you are happy with that then you're happy why am i even in the equation it's got nothing to do with me you know i you know i'm not a therapist or something or you know if you're if you guys are happy and no one's getting hurt and everyone knows what's going on and everyone's happy with what's going on that <laughs> why would i get involved you know i don't want to um that's all anyway what time are we at now oh, oh, oh my god it's 10 30 right i think it's time we go back to the live server and um give away ourselves a grace yeah i'm thinking so they're gonna log out on this guy and log in on the latest guy made enough money they made more well yeah i mean some people have watched it and you know enjoyed it and if you enjoy it you enjoy it i'm not gonna tell you you're wrong to enjoy this movie i'm never gonna do that if you like it you like it You're not wrong if you like something. You just happen to like it. I mean, that's like saying, can you imagine someone stood at the ice cream counter going, you can't like Rocky Road. You only should like chocolate or mint chocky chip or, you know, some sort of a gatekeeper telling you what you're allowed to like. Can you imagine? Fuck off. I, I want I want caramel and salted caramel ice cream. Why? Because I fucking like it. That's why. What's it going to do with you? And it's got nothing to do with anyone else. <laughs> How dare you like pineapple on pizza? I mean, yeah, you're demented and wrong. But if that's what you're into, I'm not going to judge you, except that you have no taste whatsoever um but aside from the pineapple on pizza thing if you want pineapple on your pizza you know what it's your in pizza not mine if you're trying to serve me pineapple on th this is the thing people take offense at things as though it's being forced on them and it's not no one's saying i like pineapple on pizza therefore you have to eat pineapple on pizza nobody is saying that nobody people are saying i happen to like pineapple on pizza please give me pineapple on pizza i don't like it i think they're wrong i think what the hell are you doing but it doesn't matter because it's not my pizza it's their pizza you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's the whole thing's nuts these days. Uh, 
How do we fix it, guys? How do we fix it? It's like, you know, people that, that get religious about things and go, my religion says you can only do this. Well, okay, then for you, only do this. But you don't get to tell anyone else what they can and can't do. You do realise that. You're putting the restriction on yourself, not anyone else. The minute you try and put your self-imposed restrictions on anyone else, you're wrong. Uh, so, yeah. You know, when your, your, your self-imposed restrictions... Uh, become something you think other people have to abide by that's when you're wrong if you want to impose them on yourself go for it nobody cares it's your life no one else's you try and impose them on another person then you're wrong nothing gives you the right to tell another person how to live their life unless they're hurting you or directly hurting other people so you can say well my religion says you can't go around shooting people and if you go around shooting people you're wrong then perhaps you do have a right to say don't go around shooting people indiscriminately for whatever chaotic and crazy reasons that you've cooked up because society also happens to agree that killing people needlessly is wrong but if you're saying uh, you can't do xyz and until condition uh, z is met then you're wrong you can you can have that you can have that belief no i will fight for your right to have that belief but you don't get to tell other people that they have to follow that belief you don't have that right nobody has that right you can't eat this food god says no i don't believe in a god which god which of the 6,326 gods do you mean? Because whichever one you believe in, I only believe in 6,326 less than you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My god says... The god that I believe in says that you're not allowed to do this, therefore I have the right to stop you doing it. Crazy talk. You're a mental person. You're crazy if you think that's in any way rational. That's horseshit. whatever if you believe in a god then your relationship with them is your business and i won't in, i would never presume to interfere with it but i also believe that your relationship with your god should not interfere with any fucking body else it's between you and and whatever god you believe in that's your business your business does not dictate how the rest of the world works and you do not have some kind of god-given right to do it the second you think some omnipotent being gives you the right to tell other people how to live their lives that's when you fall over that's when people stop that's when people go tell you what i can suck that convert or die yeah resistance is futile it's, it's bullshit you know i mean you believe what you want to believe i don't care you know believe what you want to believe but force your beliefs on other people 
Nobody's got that right. You don't. I don't. You don't. Next guy doesn't. You're entitled to judge those people based on your beliefs, because you will anyway. But you can't make them believe what you believe, and you never will. Because people will believe what they want to believe. The second you think that whatever sky fairy you believe in gives you the right to tell other people how to behave that's when you know you're the crazy person in this it's true you know I might have my own personal beliefs about is there a God, isn't there a God, or, or, or whatever. And I can share them with you, and we can have a discussion about them. But the second I start telling you how to live your life according to what I personally believe, is the second that I'm in the wrong. Because nobody does. There's, there's a commonality in the middle which says societies can't exist without, you know, uh, tolerance and cooperation. And that's true. And that's true without belief. Murdering everyone you disagree with, bad. Bad thing. Everyone agrees, bad thing. If you don't agree with someone, murdering them is not the answer. Everyone agrees on this. We all agree on it in the same way that we all agree that when the traffic light turns red, you stop. When it turns green, it's your time to go. You can't go, well, my God says when it goes, I don't have to believe in traffic lights, I can drive through them. Okay, you may believe that, and I respect your right to believe that, but if you follow through on it, you're going to hurt people and probably kill yourself. So the natural law of it doesn't care what you believe. It is the natural law of it, yeah? Well, no religion can bring real evidence to the table. It's all a question of belief and what you're prepared to believe and what you feel about what you believe. No religion actually has concrete proof. It, it, it's the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Babelfish parable, you know? You know, you, you can speak to me about how you feel about your, your relationship with the deity that you believe in, and I'll listen to it. And I'll respect your view. But uh, you can't expect me to just decide that upon your declaration of belief, I'm going to agree with you, because I'm not. It will take a lot more than that to convince me that that belief is correct you need to provide me with clinical scientific fact or i'm just not ever going to get on board and saying that a person that says that is wrong and has to be um con reconditioned and converted just says a lot about how strong that belief is because if you have to condition and, and, and uh, force a person to say out loud that they believe it, whether they do or not, um, 
in order for it to work, then it's nothing more than a sociological control mechanism governed by others that have your... The last thing on their mind is your best interest. And you need to realise that. You know, people are raving about Dune Part 2. The entirety of Dune Part 1 is about that. It's about the most charismatic and amazing of leaders is not necessarily a person you should trust. They're not necessarily um, someone you should invest in emotionally or in any other way because ultimately they are serving themselves and using you to do so. If some religion makes the statement you should love and support your fellow human, everyone agrees. Why? Because we're a societal animal. <laughs> That's what we are. We are best served by supporting each other. That's how we operate as an animal. That's how we operate as a species. And people have long tried to to uh, manipulate and abuse that reality to their own ends our god's better than your god yeah but given the fact that neither is real from the point of view of a realist or atheist or agnostic then you realize that the only motivation for for coming up with an argument like that is vying for control of a population to suit your own ends in the grand scheme of things and that's what that mostly is you know it, it it's problematic in the extreme it is. It's truly problematic. You have to do X, Y, Z, or you're not getting into an imaginary place that we can't prove exists, but we've told you does, and X, Y, Z. Right, okay. But if the tenets of that are don't kill someone, don't hurt someone, and don't do X, Y, Z to someone for no good reason most people will agree because empath empathetically they know that's not good because they wouldn't want those bad things to happen to them and then they then manipulate that as an ultimate truth but it isn't the sociopath who hurts everyone around them indiscriminately to their own ends is no more correct than the person who doesn't do that. The difference is, is most people are not mentally disabled and are not sociopaths. Because the lack of empathy as a species results in the decimation of the species, which is why it is a disability. Is this making sense to anyone? Anyway. We're doing the Grace Giveaway. So I'm going to type it in. The giveaway drawer is ready to go. Yeah, I agree not to murder people uh, or, or, or hurt people who annoy me and all the rest of it for, for the greater good. For my own personal good because the things I could do to some people that annoy me would land me in prison and I don't want to be in prison so I serve myself and I serve them I don't do it because there's some big rule book I do it because I understand the nature of the reality that we live in right I'm going to get another beer anyone that hasn't entered the uh, giveaway for the grace now is your last chance
And I'm not kidding, even. Right, okay, how are we doing? Peer pressure, loot please! Good luck. Anybody else? Come on, this is your last na last chance now to win an in-game grace. Now, just a quick reminder of the rules. Uh, the rules are kind of dictated by the game mechanics. You must have a active live account. Uh, paid account, that is, that has access to the GMI. Because I can't give it to you any other way, because that's how in-game graces work. I'm assuming that you have one credit, which is all you need to create a buy order. Um, <clears throat> spent some of it, but it's a lot. Well, it is a lot, yeah. Right, anybody else? I'm going to give you all one more minute. <laughs> you know, mankind's best survival chances are if we work together and cooperate. Kind of the nature of the beast, you know, we're, we're, we're a social animal. By evolution, we work best as a team. One man against a lion is going to become lunch. Ten men against a lion are going to eat a lion. Because they can plan, use tools, uh, plot outcomes, use, use critical thinking, etc. and show bravery. That's the difference. That's why we adapt, survive, and, and go on as a species, is because we can work together. That's how we evolved to be human. One guy is the bait. Two other guys have discovered and learned how to make a net. And four other guys have got spears. So one guy is brave, stands in front, and becomes the bait. Two or three others net the beast and the rest, you know, <clears throat> with spears. Everyone's eating lion tonight. One guy on his own, he's lunch. You know, we're not, <laughs> we're not actual predators. We're a social animal. We survive by cooperation and, uh, and collective good. That's how we work as a species. Need to start thinking as a whole, not this country or what. Countries are just bullshit. They are. They're just bullshit. It's one lump of planet. Where people go, oh, you're an illegal alien. Well, what planet are they from then? Oh, this planet. So not a fucking alien. And we're not different goddamn races. A black person isn't a different race from a white person. They're a different breed of person. But it's like, 
it, a dog is a dog is a fucking dog whether it's a chihuahua or a great dane or a rottweiler or an alsatian or a you know what they're all dogs they can all breed they can all produce offspring why because they're all the same thing they're just different breeds but they're not a different animal everyone is human any one of us is essentially viable with anybody else on the planet any other human you can't mate with a chimpanzee or a gorilla and have successful offspring because they are different species they are different races of animal but human beings we are all the same race we're just simply different breeds something org message demon inside oh yeah they that exploiter guild i don't know don't care do whatever don't give a shit go exploit the tower site nobody cares no they can do it in a lab they don't need <laughs> the last guy who tried died yeah i bet he did um yeah the 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 whole doesn't work um not just on the physical level but it doesn't work genetically and biologically either <laughs> that's an I tried to say. I, that was a joke i know although you know maybe the gorilla had a good time i don't know uh it could be the case Yeah, so the the whole race thing, bullshit. We're not different races, man. We're we're different breeds. That's all. We're all we're all dogs, right? We may look really, really different in your eyes. Still dogs. What's a chihuahua? It's a dog. What's a Great Dane? It's a dog. What's a husky? It's a dog. What's a collie? It's a dog. And any one of the others, any dog species you can mention, if they breed, if they try and breed, good chance of success. Might be difficult, but it can work. You know, Great Dane and a Chihuahua. Someone's going to need a step ladder. You know, or whatever. But pff, love is love. Anything can work. <laughs> You know, we ain't so effing different. I mean, mitochondrial DNA, that's the part of your DNA that never changes. Your father's influenced some of your DNA, but your your mother's, your grandmother's, your great grandmother's, your great 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 grandmother's pass on identical DNA to you. And we can trace it all back to one animal, inverted commas, in Africa. All of us come out of Africa every human being on the planet came from there it all traces back and we can do that with science so this whole mentality that people that are beyond an imaginary line somewhere on the globe which you can't see from space because it's not real it's political or whatever it is means that that person is so different from you that they're another race is bullshit because they're not it's like me now going right everything on the south side of this hill is some other place and everyone on that side of that side of the hill is completely different from us. It's like, wait, what? Why? It's all shit. I mean, complete and utter horse manure. It's not true. 
There's nothing to back that up. Nothing. I mean, God almighty, we're like, what, 86% different DNA-wise from a banana? <laughs> we're only 99.9% .9 different from any other human being on the planet? <laughs> yeah, right, we're different races. No, we're not. We're one race. We're one species. We just have different breeds. That's, you know, if you look at it in those terms, with like with dogs, you know, we've gone off on tangents here, there, and everywhere, but we're all essentially the exact same thing. And there are different traits in breeds. Like some dogs, you throw a ball, they'll always run for it. Other dogs are like, Why'd you throw the ball? Do you want me to run? You want you want me to run? You know, so there's, there's all that. So yeah, let me just um, close this bullshit. I don't know if it's someone that just really, really wants to be on the stream or whatever shit. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to delete that because I don't give a shit no one does no one cares how heavily you exploit or whatever else you're doing let me figure this out for a second Sister Fister from the Redemption Insight. Yeah, what, whatever, you fucking arseholes. I don't care. I really, really do not care. Um, how do I turn you off? You incidental, unimportant, ineffectual, in impudent pieces of shit I don't care I don't care what exploits you're using I don't care any of it no one cares take it do whatever no one gives a shit it's not worth anything We had a base in PW? I had no idea. There you go. Yeah, turn it off. I don't care. Because I've seen so many times, I've seen such and such a base was shield disabled at so and so, and then Frub account number 27 took your uh, control to how it like not even doing any of the turrets or the uh, you know towers or conductors it's all on the control tower and it goes down in like less than three minutes yeah I know you're an exploiter I know you're cheating to win I don't care that you're doing that if if that makes you feel like a big man or whatever good for you good for you good for you but you're nothing to me and neither are tower advantages no one gives a shit no one cares it's sad that you think it does it really is that you think that's important but you know the rest of us we don't give a shit mate we don't since Norton Wars in 2001 the advantages even for the most glossiest and wonderfulest tower site portfolio a clan could have 
mean nothing compared to research perks and everything else it, 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 it's just ugh. it's sad it's very sad I mean, you know, if you if you, if you turn up with your third party software and break the game by cheating, good for you, good for you. Thanks for taking part. You're a winner. Here's your medal. Seriously. Yeah, take the base, I don't give a shit. Um, it won't change anything I've got planned for the rest of the week. It won't change anything I'm doing right now. It won't change me streaming. It just, it just doesn't matter. It's like saying um, it makes as much difference to me as, uh, oh, grid space freedom has expired. It's run out. That's all it means to me. I'm serious. It means that much to me as that does. I mean, if you want to wrap around your self-worth that, that somehow um, whatever it is you think you're doing um, is important, good for you. Good for you. You go you. Now you're important again. Good job. No one cares. Um, it's a shame you couldn't do it for real. It's kind of a shame that, you know, you had to exploit to do it. Really is. Um, you know, do cheaters ever really win anything? I don't think they do. You know, if you've got 50 token boards and whatnot equipped, are you really a winner? Are you? You're not, are you? Let's face it. You know, it's a shame. And if, if you want to talk about why, you know, you you feel compelled to do that sort of thing, you know, I'm here. I'll listen. You know, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to judge you. It's kind of a shame that that's where you've ended up. And, you know, I'll try and support you as, as I can and we can talk about it. And, you know, I can give you my kind of view on it. And you can try and explain why it matters or something. And uh, we, you know maybe it'll help you I don't know it won't make any difference to me if you don't the same way that taking a towel field doesn't but you know maybe you need to have a conversation with yourself about why you think it does ah bless Hi, what? Mo, I'm Oliver. Follow. Thank you for the follow. Right, we're going to do it, guys. You've had way over a minute. So, it is time for the grace draw. There you go. Paprika69420 was drawn for the giveaway is following good luck oh, well done sir you've just won yourself a grace are you in the chat you're still in the chat I, aml i am even right sir it is time for you to prepare your grace by order what did you win he won an in-game grace, which currently is selling for... Let's have a look. If I ever open GMI, 
Oh, uh, there we go. Finally. Not saying GMI is flawless, but yeah. Right, let's have a look. Sell. So, 141 billion. Not million. A billion credits. So, we go on order details. There you go. So, all you need to do is put in a buy order for one credit. And I will sell the grace to you for one credit, which is basically free. Come on. I mean, let's be real. So it's worth 28 days, 30 days game time or that many credits if you sell it on the GMI. How can you sell for that? Well, you sell it and it locks your GMI. And then you withdraw 100 and... What is it? 140? Yeah, so you would... Let's say you sell it for 140. So you withdraw 140... Uh, no, sorry. 136 billion credits. Create a buy order. And then pull all those emailed credits one billion at a time back and increase the buy order until you know it's about 60 billion then you create a new one carry on and then create another one and carry on and then you've still got all those credits you just can't have them all at once on gmi Pabrika, I have one up for one credit. Okay, and what is the name of the character? Come on. Uh, that is buying the grace. Please tell us in the Twitch chat so we can see. Jaredar. Right, okay. So it is a very arsake, long-winded, unnecessary process. But yeah. Jared, I, where are you? No, Joy Force. That's not you. Is it is is this one you? Jared R. Confirm this is the correct buy order. It is. Okay, sir. One, two, three billionaire there you go all yours yeah so the way to handle this if you don't have a sunrise apartment is firstly head to the grid <clears throat> right so we enter the grid and then you go to here, Unicorn Defense Hub. Then as soon as you grid, go into the room to the south. And then round about somewhere on this square, open GMI. And then open the mail terminal, like so. And what you do is you've sold the grace, so now this is appearing in red because you're way over the four billion artificial cap what you do is go withdraw 999999999 one billion credits and you do that until you're under four billion then you create a buy order for something that either a no one would ever sell to you at that amount like a grace at 3 billion or 60 billion these days um and or a bag because you can't transfer bags on gmi but you can still create a buy order one for one uh and then you remove all the you know um withdrawn credits one billion at a time okay until you get back up to the four billion 
and then you add that by modifying the biodiversity you originally created and carry on but under no circumstances whatsoever leave those credits in the mail system so if you commit to doing it do not ever 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 leave the emailed withdrawn credits in the email system because if they expire your credits are gone i'm not even joking no gms uh, funcom support nothing will pull those credits back if the email expires with a billion credits it's gone sir it is gone yeah it's like 28 days but i wouldn't even leave them in there for an hour you know uh absolutely don't because the the one the gmi is pretty secure but the email system is not so you've got to be like if i'm going to do it i'm going to have like a couple of hours where i've got the time to set up these buy orders for robust backpack buy order take it all the way up to whatever or grace let's say all the way up to you know 40 billion and go right well no one's ever going to sell me one for that and if they do great because then i can sell it for 140 billion and make a hundred billion profit um and and go from there and then you can either create several buy orders or um one massive buy order it's up to you how you do it but that's how to work within the artificial 4 billion limit that was imposed on the GMI as a pathetic attempt to control the economy. It did absolutely nothing except it's a minor inconvenience for allocating credits. It didn't <laughs> literally F all uh, to change the economy of the game. It was utterly wasteful useless <laughs> lip service i'm sorry but it was right we've reached the end let's see we've got uh rubicon live feed oh we've got an actual person streaming they're doing a thing i think they normally talk on the streams don't they We're in a neutral backyard at the moment, so okay. I'm gonna go raid them. I think I raided them before. Conway Twitty. Sorry, my dude, you're a little past the deadline. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude, it's been drawn. right we'll go raid this dude is he speaking i i'm not even sure i can hear the game music and stuff but okay so there we go and um I think yeah i know yeah i recognize their voice yeah I've, I've raided them i don't know if it was last time but i know i've raided them before so we're gonna go raid them yes we are give them some support you know they're another ao streamer and you know they deserve your love they do don't don't, don't mess me around with this you know all aboard for the raid yeah they seem to be having uh, a good time that is definitely a neutral backyard and I'm thinking probably in Newland because that's where the map is at. Everyone aboard, go and go and support um, Shazis Steel. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. It's probably completely wrong, and I'm sorry.
Are we all ready? Are we all going? Right, it is time for the raid. I'm, I'm going to be back on tomorrow night uh, for another stream. I don't quite know what we're going to do, but we'll do something Anarchy Online related, maybe. And I will see you all then. Love you all. Thank you for the follows. Thank you for the resubs. Thank you for the new subs. And I will see you all in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.